Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of Eye on Ports. It's proudly brought to you by Goyle Company Limited, West Blue Consulting, Ghana Revenue Authority, Ghana Community Network Services, Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, media partners for this program, Business and Financial Times, and I'm sure you can see their logo on the screens. Also, Graphic Business supports this program, Ghana Web as well, and a host of other media outlets. Now, tomorrow, that's Monday at 8.30 p.m. on GH1, you see a bridge version of this program on GH1. Also on uh, Wednesday at 8.30 p.m., you see the abridged version of this program on Ghana television. Folks, uh, a number of issues within the industry as always, and uh, we will be bringing some of the news items around the industry for you. Also today, uh, very important, we're going to talk about the blue economy. Now, last week, we had the role of women in the blue economy. Now, the impression and the calls that followed as well as you know private messages and all of that and popular requests is that let us know what this blue economy is all about now what is the scope of the blue economy it looks like people are not taking advantage enough of this blue economy what is there to know people don't even understand there is some blue economy somewhere all of that today we have uh, a panel that will break it down for all of us to understand it deeper in the meantime, some few news items happening. The Borderless Alliance, as well as the Ghana Shippers Authority, uh, held their dialogue program. It was very successful, and a number of issues came out. Take a listen. The Ghana chapter of the Borderless Alliance, a private sector advocacy group in collaboration with the Ghana Shippers Authority, has held a multi-stakeholder dialogue wow. on the ECOWAS wow. trade liberalization scheme and the African continental free trade area. The multi-stakeholder dialogue was to highlight the opportunities and challenges associated with the implementation of the ETLS and the AFC FTA for governments and businesses across the continent. The events featured an overview of the AFC FTA and an update on its progress so far, as well as a presentation about the challenges preventing Ghanaian businesses from accessing the West African market using ETLS. Representatives of private enterprises, think tanks, civil society organizations, private associations, ministries, and government agencies took part in an engaging dialogue on how to enable a more conducive business environment in Ghana in order to position the country as the true commercial hub not only of West Africa, but the entire continent. According to the president of Borderless Alliance Ghana, Ziad Hamui, who expressed excitement over the African continental free trade area, there are many responsibilities and challenges that need to be addressed in order to reap the full benefits from its implementation. Even within the ECOWAS free movement of goods and people. And you know that there has been some issues that have to do with security in the Sahelian region. So we have to keep our minds um, and eyes open about the need to balance compliance and prosperity against security. Charles in three, from the the National Chamber of Commerce and Industry said the GMCCI issues certificates of origin for products in the country for trade across the borders. He said to address challenges surrounding the acquisition of this certificate, his outfit has improved upon its issuance of the certificate of origin in order to make their services more accessible so Ghanaians can take full advantage of the ETLS. Earlier we were issuing the certificate of origin manually. So companies were complaining. You know, sometimes they have to travel all a long distance and the time that they waste to get the certificate. So we have done this electronic certificate of origin. So uh, the company can sit in their offices, just apply, pay online, and then we we'll approve it. Bashir Abdul Haki, a freight and logistics officer of the Ghana Shippers Authority, outlining some trade challenges that have come to the attention of the Shippers Authority, revealed how efforts to mitigate the impediment of police barriers across the corridor have not been fully actualized. Most of the technology drivers are stopped. They are stopped in very obscure places. They are exposed to a lot of danger. Unfortunately, an incident that happened this year involving some of our drivers on the Bamako area. They were just stopped like that, and by chance, there was an insidious attack. 
So uh, we're from Borderless the, and uh, Ghana Shepherds Authority. The Maritime, World Maritime Week this week was observed. The uh, Ghana Shepherds Authority, Ghana Maritime Authority, all put efforts together, together with the Regional Maritime University and observed that particular event. Take a listen. A parade has been held at the Regional Maritime University to mark this year's World Maritime Day, where players in Ghana's maritime space met to celebrate women in the industry. The IMO uses this celebration to update stakeholders in the industry of steps being undertaken to enhance safety, efficiency, and security of the global maritime industry. However, this year has been specially dedicated to women empowerment. The Director General of the Ghana Maritime Authority, who described women as disproportionately represented in the maritime industry, said his outfit is dedicated to encourage female prospects to take up careers in the maritime industry. Women are disproportionately represented as far as this industry is concerned. It calls on all of us as stakeholders within this industry to put in place pragmatic the barriers that make it impossible for us to achieve parity as far as presentation is concerned. He revealed that collaboration with other port and shipping sector stakeholders would institute a sponsorship plan for females in the industry. All stakeholders within the in maritime industry will meet and then we are encouraged to ensure that we take up sponsorship of females in the maritime institution at the maritime university. Chief Engineer Samuel Akwesia Mwako, a seasoned mariner, who is also an alumnus of the Regional Maritime University, encouraged women participation in the maritime industry, but emphasized discipline as requisite in the practice of marine operation. A lot of uh, situations are there that uh, the women get on board, they need the discipline. Without discipline on board, you don't stand a chance. Female academic achievers in the Regional Maritime University were bestowed awards for their excellent performance in their various fields. A female level 2 and student offering a course in nautical science who emerged the winner of an essay writing competition in women empowerment in the maritime industry encouraged their peers to trust in their abilities to achieve their ambitions. The ability to thrive in the maritime industry is not about gender but in their abilities. So I think they can all come in and do it. Once they are determined, nothing can stop them. So empowering women and almost every uh, women within the industry, the maritime industry, the blue economy, is the focus for this year, uh, World Maritime Week. So we are going to expand that discussion further. We'll be asking, so where do all these people go? Now the best female students, the best that, all of them coming out of that nice education, what is available? Uh, when, when they leave all of that, we'll expand that. In the meantime, the Ghana Shippers Authority, the Ghana Maritime Authority, again jointly organized as part of the committee that put together that uh, Maritime Week, uh, organized sort of a seminar to educate young people there from second cycle institutions about the maritime industry and what opportunities uh, await them if they venture into that. Listen. Ghana Maritime Authority, in collaboration with the Women in Shipping and Trade Association, Western Ghana, has assembled girls in secondary schools from the Accra metropolis to educate them and inspire them to take advantage of career opportunities in the maritime industry. This was one of the key activities the Ghana Maritime Authority embarked on as part of the Ghana Maritime Week celebration, which is in line with the International Maritime Organization's theme of empowering women in the maritime industry. Women participation in the maritime industry has increased over the past decade, and according to the president of Western Ghana, Jamilat Jawila Mahama, it is the desire of accomplished women in the industry to bring to the minds of the younger generation the various avenues available for them to take careers in. We want to encourage as many of them as possible to join the industry. There are so many opportunities. There are so many jobs. Previously, it's like a shipping agent or clearing agent. That's what people know, but that's not it. We have maritime lawyers. We have marine insurance underwriters. We have chartered ship brokers. We have uh, marine administrators. We have marine engineers. She said parents and their wards alike 
should do away with superstitions that derail the progress of women in the pursuance of certain careers that have historically been male-dominated. We also speak with uh, parents and market women and other stakeholders about the advantages of coming into the industry. It's not just being on water. Water, so the men are there. Why can't we? We are all human. You've just seen that we have about two ship captains with us. They move the ships and nothing happens. It's a very safe job. Felicity Ankumase, Dean of the Faculty of Maritime Studies at the Regional Maritime University, who outlined the various courses of study available for the younger generation of women, encouraged the girls to take up opportunities at the Regional Maritime University. From diploma to, to masters, just like any other university, our programs are accredited by the National Accreditation Board. Okay, so based on their requirements for, um, for, for university, it's the same holds here. You need some grades with WASI to qualify you for the various courses. Sylvia Asana Dauda O, the Deputy Chief Executive of the Ghana Shippers Authority, addressing concerns on harassment towards women seafarers and maritime professionals, expressed faith in international laws that would protect women who intend to take up careers in the sector and encouraged them to bridge the evident gender disparity in the maritime industry. Forget about the harassment. There are laws that will protect the woman on board the vessels. Shipping has advanced, so a lot of things are changing. To, to us it will bring on board more women. And international bodies, as I mentioned earlier, are encouraging more women participation into the maritime industry. So last week we dealt a lot with uh, encouraging young women to get into this industry. And then uh, almost all the people you saw on the screen, uh, Madame Sylvia Sanou, as well as uh, uh, Madame Felicity, were all in the studio to talk a lot about that. But you see, she, they also talked about some of the women who are doing other things apart from the ones, the normal ones that you always think about, the clearing agent and all of that. Uh, this week, one of the young ladies who focus a lot of her reporting. She's a journalist with TV3. She focuses a, a lot of her reporting on port and maritime issues. Uh, took it upon herself to go all the way to Takrade to put her lenses on a particular young lady, a uh, woman who is a pilot, the first ever woman pilot uh, that we have in this country. She's working at Takrade port and Josephine Frempong of TV3 focused her lens on that lady. Take a listen to what she's been doing all throughout. My name is Henrietta Amatanki. I'm a marine pilot at GPH Igapua, Takrade. I was here for my national service and then after my national service I was taking on and then being the first woman in the environment I took the opportunity to learn how to handle the tags. I became a tag master and then I was promoted to be a pilot. I'm now a marine pilot. Takrade is the is the only point with female pilot in GPHA. I have here seven pilots and Amma is one of them. She works like any of the males. The sea stole her heart with its exquisite beauty. Amma Tanki says that is the long and short of her story. And you can easily see what she means. We have a local knowledge of the port. So anytime a vessel is coming inside or going out of the port, we go as an advisor to the captain and then we cone the vessel in and out of the port. On a typical day like this, her tax is to berth this vessel coming into the port to load manganese, among others. Her job is described as the most dangerous in the world at night because several pilots have died embarking and disembarking on a moving vessel. Women in the industry accounts for only 2%. Out of the world, 1.2 million seafarers, according to the International Labour Organization. A lot of challenges. Men don't want to be competed with, especially being a woman. They don't really like it, so they'll do everything to push you out. But if you show them that you are here to stay and you know what you're about, and then you give them the respect that they need, they'll give it to you back and then 
you work with them. Yes, I have a family, I have three kids. It's challenging combining the two, I mean, but you have to draw the line. Um, uh, it's a little tough. No, if you see her, her nature, she is the, the boy type. No wonder she comes this far. Every September 25th is used to recognize and celebrate industry players in the maritime space. This year's theme is focused on empowering women in the community. The sea is not as scary as it looks. And once you are determined and focused, you can make it. And Ama is such a person who is flying high the flag of Ghana in the sub-region as the first female pilot. The sentiments of a woman whose eyes are set on the prize being Ghana's first marine pilot. Certainly, there's no stopping for Ama Tanki. Josephine Frimpon, TV3 News, Port of Takrani. Okay, so that was a proper focus on Henrita Tanki there. And uh, I have to congratulate Josephine for doing that job. Now, it's important that we uh, reveal some of the wonderful works that have been done by very unique people. Sometimes you assume that there's a few people that you see and hear about, but a lot of people are doing grounds work there, and it's important that we unearth them. So congratulations to Henrita. Congratulations to Josephine as well. I want to be seeing a lot of uh, that work. Josephine from Pong works for TV3, and she does a lot of uh, port reporting there. Very, very good. So you have noticed that there's a lot of drive for people to get into uh, the maritime industry. Uh, the maritime industry lately, uh, people are describing it, particularly the International Maritime Organization describing it as a blue economy. Uh, we've, we've heard it. Some people say, what is this blue economy at all? Is there an economy that is blue? Is there a red one? So how did we come about this particular blue economy? And to what extent does it go? What's the scope? Do we have it in Ghana? Who can be in it? And all of that questions. I'm going to have the best uh, uh, team this evening to deal with this particular uh, subject. Last week we had a three uh, panel ladies who, have, or, who had all worked in the port for 26 years. They had all been uh, working within the maritime industry for 26 years. And then they had also attended uh, Malmo, that's the World Maritime University in Sweden. All of them had their masters from there. So this week, it's important that we let you know those who are going to sit and discuss the subject. They also have a lot of expertise within the maritime industry. And uh, I'm sure that once I start mentioning their profile, you will understand. I'll spare you the profile before uh, we go on break, but I'll just let you know them. First on my list is Honorable Daniel Nikwate, Titus Clover. He's a Deputy Minister for Transport. He's also a Member of Parliament and for none other place than the area where the port is located, the Tema East constituency. Honorable, pleasure to have you. Thank you, Sami. Mm. And you call yourself a port boy. Of course, because I was born into the port. My late father worked, he started with ex-cargo and uh, before they merged in 1986, the cargo handling Takwadi Lightridge and Ghana Port Authority. So I was born into the port. You know, it was a port that fed me and my siblings. I see. So clearly, uh, I have no, no other thing to say that I'm You so also good. have to feed the port now. Uh, well, well, fortunately <laughs> for me, fortunately for my ministry, um, the port is directly under my under ministry, ministry, so it's definitely it's and a member of the port as well. Yeah. So, so we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be talking to you a lot about uh, policy in that direction, what you're doing to also now give back and what we are to expect and all of that. Also, uh, I have the man who says that he has a sea blood. Uh, the sea water in his blood. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Kofimbia is a uh, principal partner, alliance partners, and maritime law consultant. He is the immediate past uh, head of legal at the International Maritime. Is it legal committee? Yeah, legal, legal committee. Legal committee at the International uh, Maritime Organization. That's I IMO. Uh, all the way to the top there. Almost the first. Is it the only? Yeah. Uh, 
Black. Ghanaian or if not African, who has <laughs> yeah. ever risen to that top <laughs> there. And uh, this man has a seawater in his blood, so you should expect a lot more <laughs> once we start talking about the blue economy. Also, another man that I know that all his students by now have tuned in because when they started, uh, when they saw his advert, they said, this man has taught me. Everybody says, Dr. York has taught me. Dr. York has taught me. <laughs> Dr. John York Abey is the Dean of School of Graduate Studies, Regional Maritime University. Doc, yes, it's that to have you. Thank you very much. Do you have the sea water in your blood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. You know, I, I'm from a village called Utwam, if you know. Oh, that. yes. Utwam. Yeah. So Utwam. my parents are, yeah. uh, were fishermen. fishermen. Okay. And I went to fishing some time. I see. Before I started my careers. I see. You know, so... Um, I'm more than a, a fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So we return right after the break. But something unpleasant has happened as far as cargo uh, clearance around the port is concerned. There's some feud between an importer and a clearing agent. It's not pleasant at all. When I return from the break, I'll let you see that one. Uh, just a snippet of it and then we'll continue our discussion. Stay with us. All super synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 lubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology. Highly advanced for modern engines. Prolongs oil change intervals. Save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Ear valued client. The Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is now live to make it easy to track your consignment and know the estimated duty payable for both general goods and used vehicles. We are pleased to inform you that the Ghana Trade Hub mobile app is available for download on Google Play Store for Android users and the App Store for Apple users. This is the best opportunity for all importers and exporters to know the duty payable on every good under transaction. You can reach the team for inquiries and support by calling plus 233-242-435-663. Send an email to support at ghanastradinghub.com. To remain updated, kindly follow progress on the following platforms. www.facebook.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. www.twitter.com forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. And ghlinkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Ghana Trade Hub. Importers and exporters can download the official Ghana Single Window mobile app, which allows you to track your consignment conveniently and also allows you to obtain your estimated duty for general goods and used vehicles. Please spread the message to everyone importing or exporting. The Ghana Trading Hub mobile app is now live. Download and never be cheated. This is powered by the Smart Ports Project under the auspices of the Government of Ghana and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Smart Port, improving Ghana's ease of doing business. Utiliser les ports de Téma et de Takoradi, c'est avoir un traitement rapide et sécurisé de vos marchandises diverses en conteneurs, en sacs ou en vrac, ainsi que tous vos véhicules en transit. Le Ghana a construit un parking bien pavé pour tous les véhicules en transit. Une nouvelle gare frigorifique pour le stockage de la marchandise congelée en transit. Avec un nouveau centre de traitement de données construit et la mise en œuvre efficace d'un guichet unique national qui permet aux données d'être accessibles par tous les intervenants, le traitement des dossiers dans les ports du Ghana est maintenant efficace et plus efficient. Utiliser les ports du Ghana, c'est profiter des systèmes de portes électroniques et d'exploitation des terminaux, ainsi que de la réservation des navires en ligne, entraînant ainsi un parc de camions fiable pour un acheminement de vos marchandises dans les brefs délais avec un suivi satellitaire jusqu'à nos frontières. Les, femmes, à vous les, les ports de Théma et de Takoradi célèbrent la femme. Que les bienfaits de cette célébration apportent plus de bénédictions. Et... 
International Maritime Hospital. As part of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, this October is yet again organizing free breast screening and examination as part of global efforts to prevent breast cancer. Remember that there is insufficient knowledge on the causes of breast cancer. Therefore, early detection of the disease remains the cornerstone of breast cancer control. When breast cancer is detected early and if adequate diagnosis and treatment are available, there is a good chance that breast cancer can be cured. The free breast cancer screening and examination is available to the public the entire month of October. The screening days are Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The International Maritime Hospital is situated in Tema Community 3 behind the GNPC flats. At the exit of the Beach Road in Community 3, one can find signs that lead to the hospital. Come and get screened and stay healthy. Together, let's fight breast cancer. So I've been told that you can uh, also watch us if you, you, you are not behind your television set and you still want to assess us or you're driving somewhere on Facebook. You can be viewing everything that's happening. And if you wish to contribute, you can send us uh, a message. You can also uh, phone if you can. Park somewhere. Don't drive while uh, calling us. The number that you can call uh, at the appropriate time will be 0205528353. The WhatsApp number is 055 It should be on the screens. In the meantime, as I announced earlier, uh, one importer is not happy at all uh, because he handed about 84,000 Ghana cities to a clearing agent to assist him to clear his truck, a borehole truck, those trucks that they used to dig boreholes, 84,000 Ghana cities. And ever since, that, the money was given to the agent three days before that truck arrived in the country. It's about 26 days now. He can't get hold of the agent. He can't, he texts him, he replies, he calls him, he doesn't pick up. This man is not happy. This subject goes beyond just the way I have paraphrased it here and we'll be dealing with it going into the future with the right authorities, customs and the rest. In the meantime, listen to this importer. Have you been to where you met him first? That the I've, been, I've been there, it's, it's been close. <laughs> the office is closed? Yes. The place you first met Eric yeah. is when, closed. When he came, he just opened. It's a nice, furnished place. He, we met, we talked about things. And then the place is closed now. I've tested him, but I have to give myself some. I have to cool down. Because I don't know what I can do to him. Because I don't know what I can do to him. When I see him, boss, <laughs> I don't know what I can do to him. But maybe I'll do something to hurt him more than he can hurt me, because everything is in here. Because the stress is letting me pass through. With taking my money and then not seeing you, not picking my call, not doing anything. It's very terrible, boss. It's very terrible. You go and buy this whole thing, waste a lot of, a lot of money. Come to Ghana for your fellow black man, even the Indian agent over there at Mumbai port didn't do this. This is not the subject we'll be treating today. I just wanted you to know that it will be coming up in the course uh, of, of subsequent programs that we have here with the right authorities who will be dealing with this. But that uh, importer there is frustrated. And I should let you know that uh, the duty, the amount of money he has given to the, uh, the clearing agent is even more than the duty he was supposed to pay. We'll be asking all of these questions. How do we get legitimate people, uh, you know, the clearing agents to do business with and all of that going into the future? Doc, that's not my main subject. But when you hear things like this, because I know that you are passionate about it, these things, when you hear things like this, how do you feel? It's worrying. It's worrying, you know, because it's quite clear that here is someone who is trying to do business. You know, and uh, one would have thought that uh, having come this far in terms of the business of freight forwarding, uh, the principles, the rules, you know, the conduct of freight forwarders would have reached a certain level where we would no longer be hearing of these things. Yeah. So it's unfortunate yeah. that this has happened. I'm just hoping that we'll be able to get to that particular freight forwarder and yeah. then deal with this subject matter. I, th I think he's around. Uh, he, uh, sometimes I get worried. His pictures, you are everywhere. He's around working. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman, the importer, has written to almost all the agencies now. I don't know how he expects to take it. Yeah. 
Honorable. Anyway, so my main subject for today is the blue economy, and we want to digest it. What at all is this blue economy? Where is it coming from? Maybe since you have started talking, Dr. Kofimbia, and uh, coming from the International Maritime Organization perspective, uh, also as an academician, I know that you still, do you still lecture at the IMLI? Yeah. International yeah. Maritime Law Institute. Yeah. Good. Where is this blue economy concept coming from? What is it? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, firstly, it is important to uh, mention that blue economy has been there for some time but it is now in vogue, more particularly in reference to the oceans. And uh, if we talk about the blue economy today, you are talking three main things. For example, that is to say uh, the resources of the sea. How would you utilize the resources of the sea sustainably and for the well-being of the people? So these three ingredients are very important. The World Bank has realized, for example, that if we were to take account of all of the resources of the sea and utilize them appropriately, we could create over 5.4 million jobs every year. You know, every so year? Every 4. year, 5. world over, yes, I the see. world over. So indeed, it is significant. Everybody can get uh, a share in that uh, 5.4 million, million jobs. You know, it's important to also realize that uh, sometimes I like to say we have come from the green to the blue, you know, because land over the period is where we are focused. Mm -hmm. Our attention has been on land and we have virtually depleted the resources of the land. Now where do we tend to? We the need blue. to turn to the blue. We need to turn to the sea. So the land was a green economy. The green economy. Mm -hmm. And now to the blue economy. And uh, the resources of the sea are infinite. You know, when you talk about fishery, it's finite. But then we can, in a sustainable way, you know, look at the resources such that over a long period of time, we'll be able to harness the benefits of the blue economy. That is to say, the oceans and its resources and what it provides for us. Unfortunately, sometimes when we talk about the blue economy, people only think about the main things in terms of ports, shipping, etc. You know, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. It's always important to look at the blue economy more in terms of the complementarities. That is to say, multiple sea uses. You know, from uh, all of the things that relate to the sea. You talk about shipbuilding. You talk about construction in the sea, you talk about ports, you talk about transportation, you talk about oil and gas, you talk about aquaculture, you talk about fishery, you talk about tourism, you talk about recreation. All of these things together is what we call the blue economy. So you would realize that if you were to look at the complementarities, that is to say how does one of these areas complement the other area, you would realize that the potential is huge. Unfortunately, we are very limited in the way in which we harness these resources. We means who? All, all of us. I mean, Ghanaians or global? Ghanaians, for example. Let me take Ghana. Let me yeah. take Ghana. You know, the, the first thing to ask yourself, I like to put all of this in context and say there is one word for me. That word is interest. What is your interest? What is Ghana's interest? So it is Ghana's interest that will then define what policy Ghana puts in place. That policy is what I, I would call a comprehensive maritime policy or a comprehensive maritime transport policy. That maritime transport policy then defines what your interests are. Okay. And consequently, I'm sure uh, we'll, the Honorable we'll, Minister we'll, is we'll here. Come. He will definitely talk about yeah. issues of local content, etc. You know, but okay. your interest is critical. Okay. And once you know what your interests are, then you can relate that to a comprehensive policy. Out of that policy, then you can have your strategy, and then you can have your plans and programs for the realization of those dreams in the policy. OK. Uh, Dr. York, yes, maybe, <laughs> from the academia's perspective, yeah. uh, how are you connecting this blue economy to acad ac academia? Okay. And, and what is in it for you? Because you handle a whole university that focuses only on maritime, yeah. I see. So link for us the connection there. What's, what's this blue economy to you and your institution? Okay, thank you very much. Um, 
You see, uh, when we were in secondary school or primary school, we were told that the earth is covered with about 70% of water. Mm -hmm. So when we take the whole of you know, the earth, 70% is covered with water. That we call it water bodies. Mm -hmm. That is the ocean, seas, rivers, lakes. Yeah. So if 30% has been able to sustain us up to this time, what about 70%? Okay. Right. Now, as Doc said, you know, the uses of the sea or the oceans are enormous. And um, he has mentioned um, uh, fishing and others. But another critical thing, which we call energy production. Okay. You know, we, the seas are, have potential energy. We can get electricity from the oceans. You know, so um, sometimes you ask yourself, if you have all these, why are we crying for? You shouldn't lack. We shouldn't lack. Okay. Ghana has um, a seashore line of, I think, 550 kilometers and stretches from half a snee uh, a flower. Now, this shore line has tremendous uh, sand which attract tourism. So you can imagine that if we are able to utilize even the shore, what are we going to get from that one? Okay. That aside, you see that the sea acts as defense. Without the sea, I don't know what might, what might have happened to most countries. Defense to what? Defense of us. Defense of various nations and group of people. Okay. How does that defend us? How does the sea defend us? Okay. Now, we are here in Ghana, right? Mm -hmm. We have countries in South America, to which is the sea that separates us. Okay. We have countries far east is the sea that defends us. Okay, okay, that separates us. Okay. So it means that if without the sea and the oceans, mm -hmm. you know, a mighty power will one day, you know, as we, we, we you know, in the old days we see from, uh, on, in films, you see, will march all his army and come and attack you. Okay, so it's a tremendous something. And that aside, you see, um, when we're talking about exploitation, as doctor said, we exploit so that tomorrow, when we are not there, our children's children's children will come and inherit. So as an academician, it also helps me to do research to understand what can the sea give to me? And if I'm, I'm, I'm not able to protect the sea, what will be the effect? Mm. So on that note, it means that the blue economy is something that all of us must embrace because with that, Doc has already said that, it's given us millions of you know, uh, employment. Now, it has the potential, potential to give us. Potential, okay. potential, potential to give us. Not that it's doing that. No, no, right no, yeah, the potential okay. to give us. And that, that, that's what we'll focus yeah, on. Yeah, so you talk about the fact that 70% of this potential yeah, is untapped. And untapped, that is yeah. part of the blue economy. Yes. Does it include rivers, lagoons, and exactly. all that? Exactly. It does? Yes, it does. Yeah. Lagoons. You know, because uh, it's sickening as far as I'm concerned. And uh, as we have traveled to many places, we realize the value of lagoons. Unfortunately, in this country, I pass by the lagoons and goose pimples spread mm -hmm. all over me because we are rather using our lagoons as uh, garbage dumping areas. Yeah. Yeah. You go to Tema, it's like that. You come to Accra, it's like that. The lagoons are a means of having the sea come into the land mm -hmm. and consequently, you are able to develop those lagoons for the tourism, for recreation, etc. Unfortunately, this is something we can't easily create. And where others are creating artificial lakes lagoons. and lagoons 
for we us, have them free the natural ones that we have. We're dumping refuse. We're dumping yes. refuse in these. It's pathetic. <laughs> it's pathetic. So, I mean, if you walk, if you drive today towards uh, Kolegono, <laughs> and you see the way the lagoon is, and you, you know, are from that side. So I grew, I away. grew up, I grew up, I grew up <laughs> in that place, and you used they, they crossed it with a pontoon. Yeah. It was with a pontoon yeah. that you crossed from around that side, Kolebu area, to come to London. Those, that, those days, Accra, London. Yeah. I think people yeah. know, maybe I'm, I'm using the word London, but I should say <laughs> London. <laughs> then, then, uh, then people may maybe get it, you know? And today, I mean, it's pathetic when you, when you look at uh, the lagoons. And this is happening everywhere. Go to uh, Cape Coast, Elmina, go to other places, and we are not making use of these lagoons. And that's a part you know? of the blue economy, the blue economy that, that we have yes, neglected. That we have neglected. And and when, you, when you come to talk about jobs, yeah. then I would show you how in other countries they have been able to tap this potential okay. such that if you have a cruise industry, for example, they utilize all of these resources, which is part of the blue economy. Honorable. When, when you go through, thank you very much, when you go through um, Holland, and even recently when I went to Brussels, within the cities, you see these lakes that yeah, they cruise yeah, yeah. on in the boats. Yeah, yeah. What do they have? Mm -hmm. They have virtually nothing. Yeah, nothing. But come to my backyard in Chemu, Chemu. in Temanu Town. Yeah. 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 The Minister of Works and Housing is trying to assist me to dredge it. Mm -hmm. Because hitherto, when my forebears were around the port area, the GMPC headquarters, the Meridian Hotel area, BBC in Committee 2, before Dr. Nkrumah moved them to Temamaya. The Chemu was a source of livelihood for our people. When the season is off, the fishing season is off, they all move into the Chemu Lagoon. So what happened? Today, human activity and indiscipline, garbage, yeah. human feces have been thrown into the place. And who caused that? It's, it's the people, attitudes. Today, as we speak, the Sakumo is choked and blocked. Encroachment, serious encroachment, human behavior. They have claimed part of the yeah. Sakumo land. If there should be any heavy downpour tomorrow, I don't know what is going to happen. So the whole Sakumo stretch needs to be dredged. Okay. And people are building into the Sakumo. Yeah. They are building. They are building. building. You go to Dubai, what do they have? Yeah. Nothing. But we we'll go to Dubai, we we'll sit on these artificial lakes, yeah. and we we'll pay dollars. So coming back to the discussion my seniors are talking about. And I was going to ask you on that, that from the government perspective, how does the government see the blue economy? How has the government embraced the blue economy and all these areas that we are talking about and ensuring that we you see? are able to tap the potential there is? I can limit myself to the area of Ministry of Transport mm -hmm. because in the explanation given by Doc, talk about the tourism and recreational area, it falls under the ministry. Talking under about the Ministry of Transport. Under, no, Ministry of Tourism. Okay, tourism side. Arts and Culture. Mm -hmm. You talk about oil exploration and production it under the Ministry an of Energy. You talk about fishing uh, 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 expeditions under fisheries and agriculture. But from our side, where we're in the sea, you know, the maritime sea business and, and all that. And that's a chunk. And, you know? and it's quite huge, yeah. which I agree with you. But clearly, in terms of policy direction, yeah. what do we do from Minister of Transport? Our area is to try and put the vision of His Excellency President into policy form. So clearly, when you come to the ports, it's unfortunate that he's saying that we have limited all our energies and adrenaline on port operations and all that. And you can blame us. But for us, under this ministry, Looking at the port operations, we are looking at the inland water as well, in terms of the Volta Lake, mm. where in, in, a, in a way we want to explore the potential of the Volta Lake, because there's a huge potential in terms of harnessing the multimodal yeah, transport yeah. system. Because when the vessels bets at the Temple port, the boxes are discharged on trucks. Mm? When they are discharged on trucks, now there's a railway connectivity as part of the infrastructure development for policy direction. That is why the president said, look, there's a need for me to look at transport in itself. Therefore, let me delink aviation, let me delink railways so that we can focus on inland water and the maritime sector. You get what I mean? So now, with the connection of the railways, 
is passing right at the back of Mamale's house from the port <laughs> yeah. behind Japan Motors, yes. behind Cocoa Processing, through GTP, all the way to the motor. The one leading to Mpakadai. Mpakadai. Yeah. So the, 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 the understanding and the vision of the president in that policy is how we can, we can save the road to preserve the road so that we can be able to send all the boxes up north. Then in the water lake where they can even derive navigational routes. Yeah, dredging. You dredge the, 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 the water lake. You have, we have vessels in the water lake that they just put these things back onto these vessels. Then around uh, Bupe yeah. and uh, port. the Bupe port. Mm -hmm. And some few, and we've done some study that would create about two, three ports on the water lake. So we'll be able to continue in doing this uh, blue economy business around that stretch. So clearly, in terms of policy direction, from the Ministry of Transport, all we are asking for is about partnership. Because government alone cannot do it. We Partnership cannot do with it. The private sector. With the private sector. Because the philosophy of the MPP party and government is to believe in the private sector to come and hold, you know, government, support government to let us do this job. That is why when we inherited this MPS business, we put every effort inside to make sure that this some of these things would help us. And the question you ask me is what are we putting into it? As a way of enticing business, as a way of enticing the private sector. This MPS deal, government gave $834 million as tax waiver. It's a huge money that will entice them to come and partner government. So clearly, the policies are varied from the transport sector, from the fishing sector, from the tourism sector, and the, and the energy, oil and gas sector. So what we can do, clearly, there are so many things that we can do to make sure people can benefit. And how do we do about it? For example, now that the port has been expanded, how do our people benefit? And because it's going to be one of the biggest hubs within the sub-region in West Africa, transshipment is very key. Transshipment is so key. And when it happens, it means that maritime labor is also what was going to increase. The supply of labor is, is there in the constituency of Tema East, Tema Central, and Tema West, and part of Masham and all that. The, the labor supply to make sure we, we, we benefit from these things are also there. The haulage business is also there. When these boxes are coming out, looking at where they are going in the Sahelian countries, the Burkinas and the Niger and the Mali and all that, the trucks are all there. If serious Ghanaians, and there are a lot of truck businesses that we have in the port that can equally put these boxes on them, then off we go. So clearly, I think that uh, I agree with my seniors that we are not taking full advantage of, of, of these. Uh, Blue economy, but from the Ministry of Transport perspective, our our focus is how we can direct institutions under the ministry, i.e., the Ghana Port and Harbour Authority, Ghana Maritime Authority, and the Shippers Authority, so that we begin to pick areas that we think that it is very important. And in the course of these policies, even the application, and there are issues, there are challenges, there are problems. There's a need for them to fall back because they all have boards, and you cannot sit in the ministry and micromanage. We only direct our policy through the board to make sure that some of these, these policies are carried okay. out and all that. But the, the limiting it to the, your area, the port side, uh, what is the scope of, of what you will say that you are operating with? Are you limiting yourself to the, the seaports? Or you, you, you are expanding? Does the lagoon and all that that we're talking um, about, do you have a role to play? And to what extent have you done I, that? I can say In the various that ports as well, both Tema and Takra. I, I can say, share I can say that, that in terms of the, the two ports, already we know the, the MPS project is ongoing. So that's for in Tema. July, they commissioned the first two beds. But when you go to Takra, there is one major, major, between 2017 and now, some of the, some of the infrastructure that we've been able to, to undertake is about the 800 meter key wall of the new bulk jetty. Uh, that, is going, that is going to increase the export of bauxite and manganese at the port. Either two, that was quite low. So investment has gone into that to make sure that we are able to expand this key wall to make sure that vessels that call the port. There will be more volumes of bauxite and manganese that are going and all that. Then also about this uh, Ghanaian-owned business, the Ebistec project. Mm. Uh, you know, 
it's about 700 and multiple, 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 multiple terminal, terminal that the the the, the Ibistec is a Ghanaian company that we are trying to support a Ghanaian as part of the blue economy uh, you know this MPS thing is purely some other partners between the Bolero Group and the uh, APM Mola and all that, but of including GPHA, having 30% and all that. But clearly, we want to see how we can build our own capacity within our people. And Ebistec is a typical example uh, where they want to construct this these, these, uh, terminal, this multi-purpose terminal, okay. with a depth about uh, 16 meters deep yeah. into the sea so you know so more or less a similar kind of project that uh, that's what we're doing the reason i'm asking the project is because i'm after you i'm going to move to doc york from uh the university to find out whether some of these expansion projects and things that you're talking about are enough expansion of the blue economy that we want to see considering the number of students we are churning out and the interest we are developing in the economy and that's why I want you to let us know mm -hmm. some of the, the extent government has also gone, in, in particular your area, to expand the blue economy. Mm -hmm. in, for, for example, these, these infrastructure we're talking about, majority of workers there are all Ghanaians. The one or two that we have experts that we don't have that they can import to come and partner them to do. Because doing construction in the sea and all that, it needs some special skill. You, you have to look at it. But majority of workforce within that area are all Ghanaians. You get what I mean? So clearly, having worked all these things and going forward, how does these graduates that will churn out of these investors come back and have jobs? And sometimes it's quite, quite interesting and difficult because the number of students that we, the graduates, <laughs> of course, cannot get all these jobs at the same time. But as a graduate, my father tells me, as a graduate, you are trained to have a broad mind to develop your own skill as well and see what you can tap out of your, your training. But if everybody wants a white-collar job, you all want to go and work at GPHA, you all want to work at Ghana Maritime Authority, the whole place is chalked. But from your, from your study, you should be able to design something on your own that you, you can even have people to come and work under you. So clearly, yes, uh, students that are graduating from university, it is not everybody that is going to get the jobs. But the, the sky is the limit. Okay. The potential is there. Okay. The more we create the avenues, the more the private sector comes to support government, there's the possibility that <coughs> okay. some or most of them can get some jobs to do in do, these do, areas. Do, do, yeah. Uh, your, you, I will take your reaction on yeah. that and also whether, look at some of the things that Honorable, for instance, has talked about and then what you yourself, you are observing around is the blue economy, as we're talking about, expanding enough the way we want to expand it and harness the potential there. Yeah, you know, I have told you that, you know, unless, unless you put something down that you can benchmark against, if you have a, if you have a policy, if you have a strategy, if this is your goal, if you have an objective, then you can say, I have achieved maybe 20%, 25%, 30%, etc. Of the overall target. That is it. But if you don't, if you don't have it, and it's difficult for you to do proper evaluation. And that is key. That is why I said we need a comprehensive maritime policy. Do we have that? We don't have. Okay. We don't have. We have bits and pieces here and there. We have a transport policy. So there's policy. no policy on the blue economy in Ghana? No. We, we have a transport policy. That transport policy has a section that deals with maritime. You know, but once you do that, then you must come out now and take the maritime and develop a comprehensive maritime policy. One that identifies all of the key elements I have talked about. He mentioned, for example, wave energy. What kind of studies are we conducting at this time? You know, the Honorable Minister talked about the separation of ministries. I have not have any problem with separation. We always have separation. But I worry about development in silos. Mm -hmm. You know, so he mentioned the number of ministries, and quite rightly. But fisheries must not be turning a blind eye to transport. They should integrate. They should integrate. They should find a way to coordinate. So that even as you separate aviation from rail, from this, the interconnectivity ought to be there. It must be seamless. It must be integrated. It must be modally complementary. So that, you know, look, I, I, can, I can just cite an example. Sometime ago, I stood in uh, Austria hmm, on a platform. And on that platform, you could see how the transport network 
is seamless and integrated from the rail to the bus to the coach yeah. to aviation everywhere you get down you can link one to the other yeah everywhere you can drop off here and immediately you'll be able to enter into a train when you enter into a train it can take to a place where you can get waterway access to use the boat etc so while we develop in that way and get focus on these areas we must not lose sight of the need to integrate we must not lose sight of the need to coordinate so that Ministry of Aviation does not work on the blind side of the Ministry of Transport. Yeah. So that the rail does not work on the blind side of the Ministry of Transport. So that development in silos has been a problem for yeah. us. Yeah. Sometimes by the time you realize the Ministry of Transport has run in this direction, whereas the fisheries is running in, a, running in another in direction. direction. And that is where the worry is. And I think we should look at that. Uh, so key let, point, let, you don't let, have, let, we let don't me, have. Let me, let me, let me just uh, yeah, add yeah. one or two to what Doug has said about. In addition to responding uh, to yes, the fact we that we don't have a. The, the a, relationship a on the connectivity between transport and fisheries. Mm. And, and I can say yes, because for example, any fishing company that is applying for a license to fishing is go directly to the Ministry of Fishes and Agriculture. Then because they don't have an agency that is going to look at these vessels that are being imported into the country to go to sea, they refer to Ministry of Transport. And for that matter, our agency as the Ghana Maritime Authority. Yeah. So that is where we have the whole department, the Maritime Department. They have the sea surveyors, they have the sea engineers, everybody. And these vessels that are coming into our waters to come and fish because of the application to the fisheries ministry to us, it is the duty of Ghana Maritime Authority to go and look at whether indeed it is seaworthy. First of all, you can't just come and come and throw any vessel into our waters and go to sea. Mm -hmm. Because seriously, you have to look at the, 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 the Solas Convention, the safety at sea, which is very key. So there is a linkage and a partnership and integration. That, that's when it comes to service execution. Service execution. But do you have you know, joint plans you know, and target and so, vision so, together? So that is one key area that I think that we work very closely with okay. the Ministry of Fisheries and Agriculture. There. But in terms of having a joint vision, uh, not just for between uh, transport and fisheries. But, but I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. That we, 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 we have, we have um, uh, had a consultant that worked on the general transport policy of our country. Mm -hmm. We had stakeholders uh, yeah. consultation that was done. Uh, we went, uh, Aliza. Uh, Aliza was one. We went also to Kofredua where we met the Parliamentary Select Committee on Rules and Transport, you know, to have a dialogue and their input as to what we want to do on this transport business for our country, where the interconnectivity and the integration is very key. And seriously, here too, we don't have this uh, taxify and these Uber services <laughs> yes. and the Yango and all yeah. that, that is coming. Yeah. This is a new area of technology that is coming in the transport industry. Okay. So how do you fuck? Because there are no laws back in the uh -huh. There are no laws. So going forward, how do we integrate these things? How do we add these things as part of the transport policy that we have? But I agree with Doc that there's a need for us to look at that connection because the transport ministry is the mother of these two Two, 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 two ministries that okay. So out. we are agreeing that we don't have a blue, a policy on this blue economy that we say uh, has a potential of take about 70% potential in this country. We don't have it. We don't have, but there are some, some pockets yeah. of information that need, that need to be broadened, yeah. Yeah. that need to be expanded yeah. to make sure that, look, this is what we wanted to look at. And in this new transport policy, for what it's saying, when, when it is agreed, when it's accepted, because when, when after finishing, the minister, my minister have to send it to cabinet for them to have a look at it. Then when it's accepted, then clearly we'll see how we can roll it out. Then we'll tackle some of these things that are coming but up. Do you, do you think that it's about time we have a comprehensive policy only on the blue economy? You, I mean, your, your transport is huge and wide. And you talk about the Yangos and all of that. That area, we're expecting that, yes, you deal with it. But knowing that you have, there's a particular sector that's under your ministry that covers about 70% 70, 70 of the national economy. Do you think it's about time that we have a comprehensive policy on that sector alone? Yes, I agree with you. I've told you that we have a broad mm -hmm. transport policy. Yeah. And out of the broad ones, you look at the segments, the yes. areas yes. that we can build on that. So that is what we are working on now. 
So when that is done, then for example, in the maritime, you look at all the agencies and directs. You look at GPHA, you look at Ghana Maritime Authority, you look at Shippers Authority, including academia, regional maritime university. How do we come together and come up with a blueprint, a policy yeah. that will guide us? Yeah. So that is that is where we'll be going Okay. To. I'll move on to that later on. But doctor, yes, from from the regional maritime university, how many graduate how many students do you graduate, for instance, in a year? I just want to know. Um, roughly 500. Roughly 500. Can you divide it into maybe undergraduate level yeah, and then maybe graduate level. Level. Okay. undergraduate level? Okay. okay. Well, um, you know, uh, before 2018, we had only one master program. That is MA Portership and Administration. Yeah. Okay. But 2018, February, we started with three other uh, master's program. That is MSc Environmental uh, uh, Engineering, uh, MS, uh, bioprocessing, engineering, and then reno renewable energy. They are all, you know, master's program. Um, well, the first batch of these of, uh, students will, will graduate uh, end of next year. It's a three uh, semester program, you know. But so uh, as as at now, most of the graduates we are producing are either BSc. Uh, graduates or uh, diploma graduates. Okay. You know, the MA program was being run in collaboration with the uh, University of Ghana. Okay. So they were graduating, you know, even though we were doing the, 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 the teaching. The instruction. Yeah, yeah but mm -hmm. they, they were graduating. And because of their system, it's difficult to sometimes, you know, determine how many students have graduated within a year, you know. So that is, that is it. Okay. Now... now Okay, sorry. Okay, so now, I mean, I just want to uh, add a little bit more of what, you know. Okay, be before you do, uh, okay, on, you, on you, 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 before you do that, yeah. let me ask you, because I know that uh, if you take the Port and Hours Authority, for yeah. instance, this is about 2,000 employees. Yeah. Uh, I assume you add the, the casual and all of that, the yeah. uh, auxiliary work, uh, workers and all of that, then you have about 4,000. Yeah. About. The Ghana Maritime Authority has about 150 there about. Yeah. Uh, that's if you've stretched it. The Ghana Shippers Authority, Doc, you've been there. It's about 80 yeah. employees. Now, and you are graduating this volume of people. Yeah. Yeah. Assume <laughs> that you even sign a contract with these three agencies to give them, uh, to, to employ your, uh, your graduates, 10% or even 50% of yeah. them every year. We can, it, it, it's virtually impossible that the Port Authority will take 50% of your graduates every year, or GMA will do the same every year, or uh, shippers will do the same every year. Shippers may not be able to take uh, even more than 10 of your employees every year. It's not possible. Yeah. So as you look on, yeah. where do you think you are producing these people to? Okay. Yeah, you see... Um, With this limited blue economy yeah, that yeah, okay. we are practicing. Okay. You see... It's rather unfortunate that the employer in Ghana sees a graduate from RMU as a person who can only work at the places you are, you know, okay. you are saying. But incidentally, it is not like that. Good. When you take, let's take Port and Shepherd, because we put the most of the students are from Port and Shepherd. In fact, any organization or entity in Ghana that does import or export will need somebody from uh, port and shipping or graduate from port and shipping you know department or you know but because we have uh, skewed our mind mm -hmm. to the fact that when you finish rmu you have to work with the maritime industry yeah. and this has come about because of the origin of the Mar of rmu you know rmu started as a nautical college yeah. And we were training students for Black Star Line. Mm. You know, so as we were graduating from Nautical College to uh, Regional Maritime Academy, now to university, full -fledged university, people still think that whichever course you do at RMU, work at GPH. you have to work at GPH. So, first of all, we have to synthesize the mindset of employers in Ghana. We had situations where we had students from graphic to come and study at RMU. We had students from uh, Ministry of Health to come and study. We had uh, students from 
Coco marketing board to come in. So you see, unless um, the employer understands the business is doing and the caliber of people he or she needs, then you know we would you know. Uh, what, okay, the, but no, before I come to you, is it only the employer that? will have to do this because That's your right. students yeah. you yeah. have students yeah. that you orient them as yeah. part of whatever academic yeah. pursuit they are undertaking yeah. you have a guidance yeah. and counseling Correct. centers Correct. that you tell them where to go afterwards <laughs> yeah. because the banking the various banks we have yeah. also have trade and finance departments yeah. and all of that yeah. so do you for instance let them know that with logistics background yeah. you can hit into eco bank and yeah. be at the uh, the, the finance and trade department. Thank you very much. You know, during orientation, we tell students all this. But they still want to. The deposit. point is that, you know, <laughs> when they take their certificate to these institutions, that's where the problem is. Okay. In fact, there are situations where students have even gone to the, within the maritime scope institutions there and they have been rejected. But I understand that, I mean, if um, this year my budget says I should take 10 students or so, 10 graduates, and we sent 20 graduates. Definitely some will be sent out. But you see, um, well, with the blue economy, I want to uh, talk a bit about what actually constitutes the maritime industry. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where I want to have a little about it. Yeah. It said earlier. Okay. So, you know, we have shipping. Unfortunately, we don't have ships. So when we graduate a marine engineer, there's no ship. No, there's no ship practice for as engineering, engi no. as engineering, and you have to also have to understand that. So far as SCCW is concerned, even if I finish RMU with PhD and I go on board, I'm not an engineer. I need what you call sea time, sea time to go for at least twelve months to get my sea time. I come, I sit in the classroom for at least one semester. Then Ghana Matter Authority would organize what we call a oral and written examination. Short courses. And when I pass, that's when I'll be given a certificate of competency. That with that certificate of competency, now I can go on board as an engineer or as a navigator. That is what we are lacking. And therefore, when the student finish, you know, they, they, they are found wanted because we don't have the ships to train them. Mm -hmm to get this seed time so that they can now become full fresh engineers. Okay, now, here in, in, uh, in Ghana, at least we have what the, the dry docks, you know, and dry docks and ship building yards, they form an integral part of the maritime industry. Because we have not been able to develop this as well, you see that you train uh, uh, graduates and then, the, 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 you know, uh, we only look at Two places, ports and harbors, and you know other places that we are talking about. Okay, and incidentally, we don't also have uh, what we call ancillary industries in Ghana. When I say ancillary industries, see a ship is built; it's just a hull. Everything that come or that go to make that goes in to make a ship is manufactured by different companies. Take even the life-saving appliances, which comprise of life boats, life jackets, life boys, and all so forth. They are all manufactured by different institutions or different entities. We don't have them here, you know. So as we talk about the blue economy, all these, you know, uh, entities must be brought in. The engines we put on board a the vessel, they are all manufactured by different companies. And all these are supposed to be satisfied by maritime authorities in various countries. In this case, Ghana Maritime Authority. So if you have at least one-tenth of these companies established in Ghana, definitely when we uh, graduate these students, they will have somewhere to do what? To go. But we don't have these. We don't have these things. Let's even continue with fishing. Some years ago, we had big fishing vessels where graduates of that time, Nautical College and uh, 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 um, at the academy, we're going there. Now, where are they? So it means that... We don't even have we don't, fishing We don't boats. even have... No, the fishing boats we have... Are not state-owned. Not state I'm not, I'm, state I'm state not enough. I'm not state enough. State enough. Owned. They are, yes. Most of them are being owned by Chinese, Chinese and yeah. Koreans and Japanese. 
And they bring in their own uh, crew. The crew they take here are, with all respect, the ratings, mm. who you can pick from anywhere. You know, so okay. you are right that you know we are producing so many, but uh, nowhere to, to go. Yeah, we know where to go. That's why we know. But the point is that uh, if these policies we are all talking about, you know, and before I'll let Doctor yeah. Mbia come. So doc, yeah. Doctor, yes, he has admitted Doctor Mbia yeah. this time. Yeah. He has admitted that the 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 blue economy that we are claiming is so huge, seventy percent, and has a lot of potential. It looks like. We, we haven't done so much to expand this. So even though we hope that people will be able to take advantage of it, that is not happening. From what you said, mm -hmm. do you see the same picture? Yeah, it's very true. Very true. And uh, just to add a little to what he has uh, said, you know, I, I, I mentioned one thing at the beginning of all of this. And I said one word. I don't know whether you recall the word. Yeah. I said interest. interest. Yeah. What is our interest as a nation? Once we define what our interest is, then it allows us to focus and direct our attention to that interest. At the moment, do you think we have interest in this blue economy? Uh, it's only the Honorable Minister who can say that. <laughs> I will come to politician. him, but I want you, I want you to see <laughs> yeah, your I can, perspective. I cannot, I cannot answer that one. <laughs> oh, what I, dog, what I you want seriously to, can't answer whether Ghana has an interest in the blue economy? I cannot, I cannot say that now. Um, definitely, every country has interest. I mean, but the even, extent. Even those that are not coastal states, yeah. they all have interest as far as the blue economy but is concerned. But the extent. The extent. The extent. And whether you have properly defined that interest. Okay. That is key. Because sometimes there are areas in which you have competitive advantage, and therefore you want to focus on those areas. Yeah. You know, uh, at the risk of sounding alarmist, I need to just mention that, look, we are confronted with stark realities. Sometimes I call them the choking truths. Mm. The choking truths. Because they are the reality of the day. I would, I would like to maybe categorize them into two. One, he talked about the training of cadets, engineers, etc., for uh, the ships and the rest. Times have changed. The first ship that left Southampton went with a hundred crew on board. Hundred crew to man the ship. Today, if you see any of those ships that carry these containers, the largest ship today, uh, MSC, is about 23,500 TUs. You need just about eight crew on board. I see. The times when we had the, you know, those Diego de Azambuja yeah. and the Christopher <laughs> Columbus, that they are gone and yeah. gone forever. Uh, honorable is here, Black Star Line ships. We had 40, 50 crew on yeah. board. You are not going to have 40, 50 crew on board again. I'm telling you, it's yeah. a fact. You are not going to have it. So you need to have alternatives. And therefore, yeah. your curriculum itself must be adjusted to reflect these modern times. Mm. If you don't do that, you'll be swept away. And that is what we are seeing. He's talking about training about 500 people. What kind of training do we give them? Yeah. The cadets, those that are coming ashore, if they come ashore and it is still port and shipping, port and shipping, sometimes, get limited. sometimes even the nomenclature must change. I know they do content analysis and put in some content, etc. but the nomenclature itself sometimes must change. We all are here, we're talking, for example, about the shipping industry. Shipping and logistics are intertwined. You get me? So you talk about shipping, you want to talk about logistics, you want to talk about reverse logistics, you want to talk about procurement. So to what extent are the students who are trained in shipping also procurement experts? Such that, as you mentioned, you don't limit them only to uh, Ghana Maritime Authority, Ghana Shipping Authority, or Port Authority. Almost every institution does procurement. Yeah. You yeah. get me? To what extent are they learning not only maritime communication, but yeah. all forms of yeah. communication that yeah. enhance the practice of logistics. Yeah. If you look at, Honorable mentioned it. He said his father told him something. And it's about the entrepreneurial aspect of shipping. We don't, we don't teach anything like that here. You know, and today, we all over the world. We have as, as a course. Now. As a course yeah. now. That is good. Because even when I heard about these new ones, I was yeah. very impressed. This uh, uh, bio processing processing and, and then uh, etc yeah, i mean because that is the direction in which we have to go the direction 
Today, we bring gantry cranes, you know, to the port of Tema. Yeah. And there is Hula Balu. We are crying. Labor. Like it or not, the work that one gantry crane would do, you would need about 30 or 40, you know, men, men to be able to do that job. And men are include women. Yeah. yeah but, <laughs> men. but you would need that to be able to do it. So when the technology is changing, you need to be changing the curriculum. You need to get people to adapt to new skills in the new areas. If you do not do that, then we will continue this cry. Yeah. And that is why for regional maritime university, and it's happening today even in the World Maritime University, the same thing is happening. In uh, the IMLI, the same thing and is happening. And you lecture at both universities. Yes, so, yeah. yes. And they are all trying to refocus so that today matters of the environment, matters of security, matters of, and things that people can actually reflect on and work. We talk about the blue economy and I talk about recreation. To what extent are we teaching the people about the cruise industry yeah. and how they can develop themselves mm -hmm. to take advantage of a cruise industry in West Africa? Yeah. You know? now, you, you, so you, the, the curriculum is indeed is very important. important. We need to get it right. We need to adapt. We need to change with the changing times. Once we do that change and give the skills to the people in terms of the new things that are happening, and broaden the scope. So, as you said, everybody's mind is on Ghana Maritime Authority, Ghana Shipment Authority. It must go beyond that. So then, people go to RMU, but then they have learned something concerning hospitality, yeah. such that they can. Because, as I told you, the hospitality is part of the blue economy. Yeah. It is the sea. It is it the shore. Them. It is that sand that creates that environment for people to come. And therefore, people should learn about it. Yeah. And they should learn about how they can gain advantage as far as the training they, they, they had in RMU is concerned. If you, we do not do that, then we, we, we are failed with these problems. You're, you're also with uh, CELT, is it? Yes. yes. You're a fellow with CELT. Yes. Uh, Chartered Institute of Logistics Logistic and Transport. And Transport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know that you also uh, train and issue certificates and all of that. Yeah. Affiliated to which universities? To GIMPA. Gimpa. Yeah. Okay. How encompassing is that particular thing? Yeah. Once again, it seems to me that the focus is narrow. With a sales program? Yes, quite frankly. Once again, it looks like the focus is narrow. Okay. As I said, the whole idea is logistics. You know, even though logistics is very wide, you know, the logistics is a trillion dollar economy in itself because there is nothing that you produce that will not finally land somewhere in terms of consumption. Yeah. Everything you produce at the end of the day will be consumed one way or the other. Yeah. And the whole chain, whether there is value addition or not, ends somewhere. And that chain is the logistics chain. So when you break that chain into pieces, to what extent are you isolating them and then dealing with them in an encompassed manner? Okay. Yeah. So we have silt that you are admitting that it's narrow. We have RMU that we are also admitting that the focus is also very narrow. And we have a very choking blue economy that we have, or stagnant, limited. We have the potential the potential is exploited. Is that is it, it's not it that open way. at the moment. Yeah, it's not very open. Yet you know? we are training yeah. to limit to this very narrowed yeah. blue economy. Yeah. Honorable. Uh, RMU is under the transport ministry, for instance. To maybe this is where the policy comes in. If there is a policy that pushes them to direct their focus from time to time, the SILT and all those training departments, probably we wouldn't have so many people coming out and now crying that, Honorable, I need job. And I know that you always get a lot of pressure from <laughs> constituency. <laughs> constituency. That's all you can run away from it. <laughs> where is the policy to move everybody to? revise their notes. Currently, there's a five-member country that constitutes the governing board. Mm. Talk about Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, the Gambia, and Cameroon. and Cameroon. But of course, Ghana is a major contributor in the, the RMU. Regional Maritime University. Mm. Every year, we are all supposed to contribute money in the running of this university. 
when you look at the student population, I can tell you about 98 to 99 percent <laughs> are Ghanaians. You look at the infrastructure in the school was provided by Ghana. Until recently that I know uh, uh, Gambia, Gambia yeah, put up, put assisted, up a facility yeah. uh, to put up facility. But Ghana government is playing a huge role. And we are even thinking that the army law I want to pass. Yeah. We want to make sure to ensure that certain areas in terms of appointment must be reserved for Ghanaians. Yeah. To make for like the VC mm -hmm. and other That's places to I make sure that on. we take yeah. full control yeah. of whatever we are doing. Look. Now, as to what kind of policy do we the the governing board as and when I've been on two occasions, the one that was held last year in yeah. Gambia and until recently that was held here to represent my minister, but we'll look at generally in terms of activities within the university, their curriculum and all these things, what the committee of experts reports to the governing board is what we generally will look at. And I remember at one time, well, they, they wanted to do accounting. Yeah. And we were even questioning. Yeah. Why <laughs> the <laughs> interest <laughs> going, we've started. <laughs> and they've started, they yeah. do accounting. So we're okay. asking, ah, yeah. this university was, was, was established yeah. to look at the blue economy. But from where doctor is saying, there's a need to have a multi scale. Yeah. yeah. By your training, yeah. even if you could not get where you went, yeah. at least because you of the other training that you had, yeah. at least can push you to employment yeah. in some way or the other, which I now understand the reason why they are coming with some of these things that they do. But one thing that Dog has said that is very striking is, is the, the, the new type of vessels that have been built now. Gradually, they're moving away from the human factor, where technology... And, and, and ICT and all that in the way that they want to push people out. Uh, I'm told currently, uh, uh, dog, yes, that in Europe, the young ones don't want to go to sea anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It is purely the Filipinos yeah. and yeah. we yeah. in Africa yeah. here that we are interested in sea. Right. But the real European boys, yeah. hey man, you are right. they are not interested yeah. to yeah. go to waste their time yeah. in, in at, the, sea. On, on, at no. sea. No, 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 they don't want to do that. Mm. So clearly, I think that at one time, the Ghana Maritime Authority want to assist to procure some training vessels. Yeah. For, it's still on the on drawing board. It's all about money, resources that we can get so that they can have the sea time so that they're able. And again, we're also looking at how some of these, now that this MPS thing has come in, how are we going to benefit in terms of these uh, feeder vessels that are calling here? Mm -hmm. There should be a linkage between the university yeah. and these institutions. So we'll be able to, to find out if there could be a place for these students. At least the seed time is very important in their training. And it is something that the university and the governing board will discuss, which I'm sure the, 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 the VC and his team are going to look at. Because now uh, the vessels will be calling. Yeah, but and, it, it and, started and, around. You know, what they're calling is it's, it's not much. 29. Yeah. So no, yeah. what I'm saying is that it's not much. Yeah. By the time they finish the whole, you know, the arrangement in the MPS area, that is where seriously good. But I'm sure the they formats. should be able to start yeah, yeah. to engage yeah. these, yeah. these vessels that are calling. Yeah. And when the transshipment are also very, very serious, I'm sure we're going to get some employment yeah. to feature some of these young yeah. lads in these yeah. areas. Um, to, to add what the um, um, Honorable is saying, you see, well, we on our own have formed partnership with, or remember from the standard with companies like Ben Shooting. Shooting you know, I was coming there. Who, the German one? Yeah, the German one. In fact, at the moment, he is training our cadets. And of course, we are producing more than he can train. Okay. And other um, uh, institutions. Right. Now, um, when it comes to the, 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 the training vessels and all that, of course, as Honorable said, we have made several attempt, attempts, and then uh, Ghana Maritime Authority, through the yeah, Ministry of Transport, you know, are working on that one. But the, the 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 problem here is also that you see, I know that in some jurisdictions, when the local content law uh -huh. becomes so operating, mm -hmm. there. then uh, we have, will have the power. To say that well, government says or the law says that mm -hmm. every ship visiting our coast should carry at least one person. Yeah. Then that will also help us to do A, B, C, D. Okay. I know that in the in the no, um, uh, how do you call it the Scandinavian, the, the, the Scandinavian. Scandinavian countries. You know, it's it, that that one. It's it's a law that every ship, if a, a ship 
uh, visit your port for a, for a period of, uh, for example, one year, that ship must take at least one cadet. Okay. And those ship owners who are citizens of Scandinavian countries, you are forced, if you have one ship, you have one cadet. If you have 10 ships, you have what? 10, you know. But all these must be backed by legislation. Yeah. And when, if, when that happens, then we can also have the power to do whatever we have to do. Out of the legislation bit. So at the moment, there's no, that kind of local content legislation is not. Having there. seen anything like that, I haven't. Yeah, specific to, but, yeah. specific to, to, to our industry. To, to our industry mm -hmm. Where we, we ensure that vessels that will call in our ports need to employ any of our graduates and all that. Obviously, and maybe not just that, that's also oh, no. other areas you know, of private services, you, you know, know, have that local content. I, I local you can, content. You can do is he, is all, he? all in every sphere. Okay. You know, otherwise there should be, as he said, it's be backed by law and there should be reciprocity. Okay. And remember that there is international law. And consequently, uh, you cannot always tell people what they what should do, do want. Yeah. except they are operating in your territory. territory. You know, the reason that underpins that territorial thing is sovereignty. Because you enjoy sovereignty in your territory, you can determine what people do within your, your territory. territory. But outside Let's of your territory, it becomes very difficult. What growing up in Tema, I recall the days of Yumako, yeah. mm, yeah. liner agencies. Yes. Holland, West, West Africa, Africa. Mm. and recently mm. we have uh, Panapina. Mm. These are all shipping lines that were working in, in, in the country. Mm. And they have agents who are Ghanaians. Yeah. Yeah. But now what do we see? Mm -hmm. They've pushed all our agents away. And they have taken that role for them to do here. Because we and don't have a legislation that you know, you know, you know. I recall in the sixth parliament, when we were passing the GIPC uh, 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 law. law, yes. yes. At one time, I had, I had a literature from South Africa, mm -hmm. a literature from the United States, a literature from Nigeria, mm -hmm. where normal ship agents who work yeah. were reserved for their nationals. Mm -hmm. We made the argument for the opposition perspective. We won. And that, that, was, that, that, that article, at that part of the law, was embedded. Was embedded. But later, what happened? A lot of things happened. So it's no longer there. Oh, they were the next day. They <laughs> have to change it. I remember. I remember. They have to change it. I remember. Very well. But even but, today, but today, in the so it is law. wrong. We it is wrong. In the country, we don't have it. It is wrong see, for those people to control mm -hmm. because it's reserved for Ghanaians. No, but because you 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 want to sleep. Once you go to sleep, they will take enforcement. They will take enforcement. Once you go to sleep, they will take it. They were in the customs yeah. as far as uh, free forwarding is concerned but people are fronting yeah. for yeah. others yeah that's you know? bad so if the enforcement is not there no. you are likely to fail but honorable you are in parliament as well and that makes it great i know that you've chaired some of the was it transport committee you were chair or mm. trade no i was in trade trade, trade. okay until, but until you know uh, coming from as a minister of transport in mm. parliament how what what prevents you from pushing for things like this? Because, you know, this is I what mean, will make your ministry work. Uh, um, um, no, but it's, it's not oh, easy. The ministry is working on something like that. <laughs> on, oh, the right. ministry of transport. You know, mm -hmm. so, so we'll get there. We'll mm -hmm. get there. Because what my minister is trying to do is look at some of these things that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And thankfully know, we have experts Kabutaj. Kabutaj. Kabutaj yeah. law Kabutaj. Yeah, mm -hmm. that we are looking yeah. at. And he has an organization mm -hmm. that they are giving a lot of inputs to us. To make sure that when we pass the capital law, we'll look at these areas to make sure we reserve this business for our people to now, do. Uh, Dr. York mentioned the dry dock and yeah. shipbuilding. Yes. Yes. Let, let me come there. Yeah. Uh -huh. because it, is, it, is, it, is, it is an area. You know, yes. It is an it's area. It's a cash cow. It's a cash cow. Yet that's, left that's, uh, that's, let me tell you. Let, <laughs> let, 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 let the you. minister tell us. Let, well. let, let, well. let, let the minister tell us something. Because this Let me tell you. I recall one day when my minister called me to his office. That His Excellency the President said that there's a need for us to really look at the shipyard and dry docks. Mm. Why? Because the Malaysians really came to milk us. Yeah. What they said they were bringing in terms of money to invest in the dry docks never happened. It was a few that we had, they really came to milk it. Mm. Thankfully, when the NDC were exiting, they managed to make an arrangement that GPHA should come and support. And when we came, we are continuing. But GPHA resources are limited. Yeah. And for that matter, they cannot take the full bill 
of, of Shipyard and Dragos Corporation. So we started an arrangement. He sent me to Dubai port. Mm -hmm. He sent me to Oslo. Mm -hmm. In Dubai port, the size of Dubai port, mm -hmm. dry, the Dubai dry docks, yeah. mm -hmm. is about 10 times of the shipyard. Yeah. Yeah. And averagely, they can work about 300 vessels mm -hmm. in a year. Yeah. Now, when you look at the Atlantic from South Africa, all the way to Las Palmas. Mm -hmm. The after South mm -hmm. Africa, the only serious dry dock you have is mm -hmm. the last shipyard and dry docks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, Las Palmas. So, averagely in a year, the activities that is going on in the Western region, the oil, mm -hmm. where they go to uh, dry docking either in Las Palmas or in the Gulf or whatever, in a year it's about five billion dollars. I see. Yeah. So that is where the president said. There's a need for us to take advantage of this arrangement. And I was in Oslo. In Oslo, they built um, uh, the, the, the vessel that they use in this uh, uh, FPSO. Yeah. Um, yeah, they built the FP, FPSO. So, yeah. there, I saw it. I climbed yeah. one. Yeah. I saw yeah. it. And here, in the Dubai one, they do ship repair, yeah. Yeah. ship yeah. manufacturing, like engineering, yeah. and all that. So we want to have a blend. We want to have a serious blend to see what we could do. And the amount of money that's involved is almost about... $250 million. Three weeks ago, I represented the minister at the Ministry of Budget, uh, 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 Finance. Mm. And my minister came in later. What he told the Ministry of Finance was that in as much as we are waiting for potential investor to partner government yeah. to expand and develop the dry docks, so, there's a need to for the Ministry of Finance to, to make some money for us. Yeah. About $100 million to start with. So we're able to change the machinery because most of the machinery are obsolete. It is only GPHA that has come and they are supporting them with some yeah. few things at least. And they are making, they are doing well. Yeah. It means that if we're able to put in more money, we will make a lot. The because workers are ever ready in to make sure. Also, GPHA pumped you know, about 13 million. You understand? So it means that when we're able to put in a lot of money, we can turn the whole dry dogs around. And, and all these monies that are going, we can get it here. So what's, so delay, clearly, what's delaying us? So what is delaying us is funding. So we are still exploring. We are looking at uh, 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 potential uh, what call it, partners that will come. So the Ministry of Finance priority, also makes it. You, you, you understand? It is a priority. It is, it is when a you priority. Know that you make that is he, is he? huge sums of money some, out some, of a particular project, some. and you watch it over some. three years some. and just <laughs> some. see it the that resources go waste of this country. What? See it go waste. Look, on everybody our is going to the Ministry of Finance. But so you prioritize. We can develop this country when we are able to pay our taxes. The port is a major contributor of revenue generation in our country. Mm -hmm. Until this paperless came. That's why you prioritize that area. So, so, so it is one before two. It is one before two. But would you want so, to wait and see a facility that can bring so much deteriorate Sam, Sammy, before Sammy, you then get back to it? My minister is not going to bed. He's not sleeping. Good in as know, much though. as we are looking at partners to come and partner us, that is why he has told the Minister of Finance, he needs this money. He cannot generate the money himself. But of course, there are other pressing needs. There are equally other pressing needs. It's a matter of how we can win the heart and soul of the Ministry of Finance where they can give us all this money. Of course, if they give us this money, we'll be able to rake in more money to pay some dividends back to government. So because we are still engaging. If we are admitting we are that talking. along the shores, and if we're able to fix these dry docks that yeah. we have in Ghana, Tema and Takrade, we take control of the entire I know, world. I know. I know. And this so is huge money that is sitting there. I know. I know. Even with the yeah. carrying yeah. capacity yeah. and with all of us yeah. admitting that the place, the equipment are highly obsolete yeah. and all of that, yeah. they are still doing business. They are still doing business. Yes, doing business. You I see? know. So, so it's a prayer that this 2020 budget, at least something will come for us to support the bright dogs. Because it's very, and the minister is so mad about it. He's so, so mad about it that he needs his money to turn, to turn the dry dogs around. The, the, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a critical area, yeah. you know, not because of the dry dock for itself, but the potential for it to cascade into other things, yeah. you know, from the, the ship small building, ship building the small boat building, yeah. the building of the yachts, you know, yeah. all of these things, repair, maintenance of craft, all of these things then develop along it, you know, so that is why it is critical. And I agree with the minister that, look, you need to look at the geography. And if you look at the geography, you look at the coast, and you realize that you are sitting in a place where you have Very an advantage, strategic. Yeah. strategic. So then you need to prioritize, put some 
resources in that area. I'm hoping that and, the and, Minister and, of Finance and, will listen and, and, and so that so, money is put so, in that area. As you know? part of the money that we are trying to acquire, the navigation routes into the dry docks have to change. Because the, the deepness of, of, of the, the depth, depth, yeah, the the depth, depth is so low. Yeah, yeah, we so want low. to call more bigger vessels to come in mm -hmm. for dry docking, for ship repairs and all that. The mm -hmm. navigational route will need to dredge it. The dredging, go the, deep. The turning basin. Yeah. Go yeah. deep, deep. Yeah. About 10 or more. Yeah. Or maybe about 14, 12, 15. Okay. About. And, and to make sure we can have more when you vessels. started your submission, uh, uh, Honorable, you, you talked about the private sector partnership. So if you see that the government is having difficulty in doing this, what alternatives have you looked at in terms of partnering private sector I, and prudently doing so for that? I know, I know there is some work that is ongoing. We've engaged some transaction advisors where some other people have expressed yeah. interest. And um, they are looking at what is best for us. <laughs> if that goes to and you have some money. Some that people, people, that can take forever. People, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Some people, you know, you know people, something. Sometimes. People. But, uh, look, we spend money. Uh, mm -hmm. we spend, this one, honorable, forgive me, but mm -hmm. we spend money that could have been utilized in doing some of the work, for example, in the dry dock, in this consultancy, the consultancy, the, the conferences. By the time you realize you spent, you have spent about more than million, what you even one million dollars. <laughs> that one million dollars, <laughs> I'm telling you, can bring a new equipment, yeah. you know, to yeah. start a particular area at the dry dock. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't uh, mind who Lots you of take, talks. but my, my point is that it's been like that, you know. It's been like that all through. We need some time to say some of the things. Look, we go out there for the private sector sometimes. They don't come. They don't come. They don't come. They don't come. You are doing the effort. They are not coming. It means that we as government, we need to realize that we need to put something aside to deal with this thing. Because we want to interest the private sector. It's like we a lady and she doesn't like you. <laughs> you continue winning, winning, and she doesn't like you. You know, <laughs> better find you. Know, better you find yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know you put and, and, and you sort yourself out. Sort yourself out. As part you of know? the <laughs> procurement process, yeah. mm -hmm. it's one of the requirements you engage mm -hmm. these people. Well, I agree with you that these processes that we go through, mm -hmm. those sometimes take forever. Will yeah. be used yeah. to. Yeah. Sometimes, well, I agree yeah. with you. Sometimes, but clearly, no? we are not. We are not going to sleep. <laughs> you know, we are not going to sleep. Yeah, the, the, the ministry must do something. I mean, issue about this the ministry must be prepared. The minister is yes. really, really keen yeah. on this yeah. dialogue business. That they, 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 they must be prepared to put something in. The ancillaries he talked about. That is where, in many places, the ancillaries are built out of an industry like that. Exactly. Yes. The 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 area of private private partnership is also of concern now quite often and you you give a very important example that that i think that we should refer to the malaysians taking over the dry dock at the time we thought that we were partnering mm -hmm. and we ended up giving so much away mm -hmm. is it the issue of bargaining is it the issue of poor negotiation on our part all the time hmm. that let us give the best part of our blue economy away only to come back I, and realize I, that I, so, I, mean, I think that <laughs> if, it, if that somebody is, in our is, house could is, have done is, the same job and done better and it's history because yeah. we have learned huge lessons yes. for what going forward I'm not sure that uh, currently under President Kumaru's government will engage uh, any foreign partner to subject this country or assets into into such 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 a manner because we are not going to sit down to tolerate those things to happen mm -hmm. and that is why we are very careful in the choice and the selections of the strategic investor because mm -hmm. this is a potential that can make a lot of revenue for the state therefore we need to take our time and make sure we solve the right partner yeah. to come and support us yeah. so as for the malaysians is history mm -hmm. we don't want to go there again no, no, I, I was actually yeah. generalizing. Well, I don't just know how hard the negotiations were done. Yeah. I, I mean, don't know. In, in other that was private in the sector time. engagements, yeah. how, how was that? You know, you know, you know sometimes, sometimes, quite frankly, you also need to negotiate from a position of strength. Yeah. You know, if you go into that negotiation with your back broken, mm. you know, when we start talking about what is the, what they left, what was there, yeah. they came to even take something out of it again. If we took it to a certain level and the people come and they say, this, you say to hell with you, I'll go to the next person, I'll go to the next person. But when they come and you yourself have nothing at all, 
then you find out that it be very, very, very difficult. Like the state we are in now, mm. you know, the, the, make the, the negotiation we, very we, difficult. We, I don't know of uh, fishing and what RMU is doing as far as that area is concerned. Yeah. All these lagoons yeah. and rivers and the potentials around that area. In fact, I mean, we have learnt, and I, I made reference to this at last time, that even in the area of women, the women who do, or yeah. those who are engaged in it's exports, all part of the blue it's all part of the blue exactly. economy. Yeah. To what extent are you tapping around all those areas? Now, exporting yam, do, People feel that those things are left to some, some people to do. But no. can't we commercialize, made it a lot more attractive? You know, let, me add, let me add a footnote okay. so he can address all. Yeah. You know, we talked about the curriculum. You know, recently we, are, we tried doing closed seasons. Yeah. And there was yeah. like hula baloo, you know, yeah, among the fishing community, etc. And all of that. I think as we speak now, uh, there is a closed season for the yeah. trawlers and things like yeah. that you know within their curriculum in rmu you know it's important for them to highlight fishery yeah as a very important resource okay. where people can be taught a wide spectrum of things and they can go out there and then disseminate information to even artisanal fishes uh, uh, fishes as we, we call them these days you know what is important for them to bear in mind is that in teaching, people must know that the fishery, for example, is a finite resource if you don't manage it well. Mm. I don't think they teach fish, f fishery okay. management. Do, okay. do, do, you do, do you do that? No, no, no. Is you know, okay. total, you, 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 total, yeah, okay. total stocks you can take yeah. in a year, okay. allowable stocks, you know, yeah. net uh, sizes, mesh, etc. All of these things must be taught so yeah. the students can go out there and when they go to fisheries, they can bring them to bear on the industry, okay. you know. Right. Uh, thank you. You see, um, you know, some years ago we had a whole department called Fishery Department. Mm -hmm. And we were training engineers, navigators, artisans. But just as I said earlier, when the fishing industry in Ghana started going down, all these people we had trained decided to divert to merchant navy. And those who were with the private fishing industry, like Mankwade and uh, Kaluo and all those things, you know, when all those companies died, they also found their way. Yeah. Now, at a time, uh, uh, Minister of Agric, you know, uh, actually through, uh, it was uh, FAO, through Minister of Agric, there was a program where RMU was engaged to train artisanal fishermen. And there was um, a fund, you know, voted for that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when that money fizzled out, this project also died out. Mm -hmm. As I speak to you now, we have prepared a curriculum for fishing, mm -hmm. which will be rolled out very, very, very soon. Sure. Okay. Okay. For artisanal fishermen specifically. That's the direction we want. Exactly. To see. You, want to see. you know, mm -hmm. so because important. we have realized that, I mean, uh, our fishermen, though most of them are illiterate, when it comes to the work itself, they are very good. Of course, yeah. they started from infancy and now yeah. they are grown and experience. They are good. Yeah. So that pro pro project is on course. Not long ago, we signed an agreement with Shanghai Ocean University. And they were, you know, they, they, they are saying that they want to train, uh, in fact, graduates, already graduates. You don't, it was going to be a postgraduate program. You know, you'll be in Shanghai for at least 10 months. Initially, it was going to be one and a half years. But when we did our analysis, the thing was that I finished a university. I'm a graduate. I want to go and do... Uh, fishing technology. Now, if I come back home, where am I going to work? Mm. Most people we interviewed told us that yeah, it's a good program. But the point, when I come back home, we don't have the facility. So yeah. why should I go? As I speak to you now, um, the, 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 the Shanghai Ocean University is trying to even seek scholarships for those who will be interested. Okay. This time, 
It's not going to be one and a half years, but they are saying at least six months. And they have you know, presented this idea to their Ministry of Fisheries and Education. And if the idea is bought, then it will left to the student to only buy his or her ticket to Shanghai. And but tuition will be free. Everything, tuition, accommodation, you know. So that's what we are, you know. So okay. the fishing thing is, is ongoing. But I'm saying, uh, just as I've already said, because of the fact that you train, a, you know, somebody to be a skipper. Those, those are called them skippers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the captain on board yeah. a fishing vessel. Yes. You know, okay. He, he finishes. There is no vessel uh -huh, for but, him. But you to see, go. once again, that's what I was talking about. Because the training itself, Focused all the time on skippers. It's limited. You get no, no, it, no, no, no. It's, it's just like no. I it's not on skippers. That you those start times, from I mean, the beginning times. up to the time that you become. Had, uh, has it always been? Yeah, like you that? become a cadet, pass through the. Yes, system, all I'm saying is still, still it's in the same line. That's what I mean. It's that. in the same line. Yeah, but you see, that's what I'm saying. You see, at that time it was. Let me use the word. It, it, it seemed to be more academic. We didn't yeah. uh, gear the you know the the training. To the artisanal fisherman, as you know, mm -hmm. you know, he's saying. But now, our focus is to make sure that the artisanal fisherman is educated enough to be able to take, you know, the mantle. You know, it's, uh, okay. If you go to I, Canada, about fishing. Let, me, fishing, let me, let me, yeah. let me, let me, let me talk one. about uh, <laughs> <laughs> this. This uh, London, uh, I've, London I've, beach I'm told that about the ten London, people have been on the line. The, the London beach sites okay, that uh, the president has initiated yeah. that we're about to construct because mm -hmm. two of them have been opened already uh, that is this cove mm -hmm. and axim mm -hmm. and i think moria and all that and i think that this is something that is quite quite important because yeah. when yeah. you look at the tidal waves the way it is destroying mm -hmm. you know the canoes of our poor fishermen and all and that in in i recall my colleague honorable uh, afenyo marking on two consecutive years where he made a statement at the floor where Several of his canoes, of his of his constituents, were destroyed. You know, which it's so worrying. And I think that this London Beach is coming at an opportune time that is going to safeguard these properties of these uh, fishermen at sea. And again, sometimes I ask myself a lot of questions. Some of these Chinese vessels that are in our waters. Sometimes when I go to fishing up and I see some of these vessels, I ask myself, are they seaworthy? Yeah. It's a lot of questions I ask myself. Yeah. And they go to sea. Yeah. And sometimes, when you're even bored and you go in, the sanitation yeah. Yeah, it's useless. in these vessels yeah. is worrying. And isn't there a policy I mean, to deal with There are policies, there are laws. The, why are they I mean, not being maritime authority, fisheries, yes. that you have that collaboration but that's not to happening. make sure. So I remember recently, during the time of Kwame Uzu, Kwame Uzu there was some collaboration within them and the future ministry yeah. to make sure that they ground yeah. some of these vessels yeah. that have these poor, poor standards. Poor. And, within, and they within, report to your ministry you and understand. you have observed all of these. So, 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 far, so, so I'm so. saying that we need to make sure we, we, we get to the, to, 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 to the brim to yeah. make sure any vessel that calls on our, on our ports and they don't conform. You can't do this in the Franco you know, yes, they find And again, and again, yeah, senior, and again mm -hmm. sometimes the remuneration and the conditions of service of these, these fishermen. Yeah. I have told my minister, and he has agreed with me, we will tie in future mm -hmm. licenses that I want to give. Mm -hmm. We'll look at the program, the condition yeah. of service. How would they want to handle these uh, 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 sellers? Yeah. They get a chicken feed. Exactly. Yeah. Some yeah. cheap money and, and give then, it to them. Yeah. If you don't want, you just yeah. drop you off. Because there's nobody so, so, to speak so, for. Yeah. You, you yeah. understand? So, so it's a major, no, major, we, major we, issue we, that we need to tackle it. And yeah. I'm, I'm very serious about it. Very, very because you see, it. some of these things that you have talked about, if we were to enforce them, it's also a way we can even create employment. employment. Yes. Yes. I the the people we train, but we let no? all these go yeah. loose. Yes, you, you know, see, I'm, along, I'm, I'm along the advantage coast. because I live in mm. Tema, and, yeah. and I'm in the minimum. But the good thing, though, so it is if if my agency is not reporting to us, it is only when it's beyond them that they can draw the attention of the minister because you can't micromanage them. Because this is but at agency. least you, you have seen this. You know? And, yes. and so that has been brought sure to your notice. This. But you can take them on for, for, for not doing As I speak to you now, there was, there was a video that went viral. A Chinese vessel registered in, in our books. Uh, 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 registered of vessels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where registered. they went to fishing. Mm -hmm. And you know these anchovies, anchovies or whatever yeah, they call anchovies. it. Mm -hmm. These small, small fishes. Yeah. Yeah. They are throwing them into the sea. Mm -hmm. They are throwing them into the sea. I've written 
and I've asked my chief director to follow up. I spoke to him and he said, come on, make sure, follow it up. Let's liaise with natural security mm -hmm. and get hold of that vessel. Show the video to them. Because the Tisna Kenyan fishermen are worried. They yeah. are crying. Mm -hmm. That where they are supposed to go to the fishing, they come down, so, down the yeah. vertical mouse within yeah. the comfort zone of these artisanal Kenyan fishermen. Yeah. Yeah. Making it difficult for them to... Yeah, I'm, to, to, I'm, I'm going to go to the lines, the phone lines, and to okay. those who are watching us shortly. But uh, on integrating and working with the other ministries and agencies, it's very important I, I ask this one because, you see, we have always said that the port, for instance, is a, the landlord. There are about 24, 25 other agencies around there, the Standards Authority, Food and Drugs Authority, all these people. That, you also talk about the Ministry of Energy. We have LNG. Because of that, we have Ministry of uh, the Oil and Gas people. All of them are there. But all these people are working that under your ministry. Sort of, they are working in your space. Mm -hmm. So if there are policies that you think you can put in place and bring them on board, to work together to grow this particular economy which you are in charge, is it not about time? It is. I recall uh, when His Excellency the President in 2017, we met at Lamadi Beach Hotel uh, to speak about the port. That was when he came out with the, the paperless statement and on the paperless and, mm -hmm. uh, and all that, where there are so many institutions of state in the way their work you know, impede, mm -hmm. you know, the smooth way of uh, the clearing process within the port. And he gave certain directives to make sure that he that has fought some of these institutions should find a way, mm -hmm. you know, like these joint operations that yeah. they have, uh, the national joint security, inspection. joint inspections inspection, and all yeah. that, to make sure the clearing procedures become so fast and all that. So, so and in this case, these are areas where they also make their IGFs. Yeah. So, it's very difficult to tell them, hey, move don't away. come to the port, move away. <laughs> but, but clearly, mm -hmm. if we have an mm -hmm. IT platform mm -hmm. that they can own by the press of the button, yeah. we can all assess it. Okay. Without physically going to the ground yeah. Yeah, to do all that, it can help us. In fact, let me move you. I think maybe you got me wrong. What I meant was that. Yeah, at the moment, you said, yeah, it's in expanding the blue economy, you are sticking with the transport ministry because you know what you are doing along that line. Yet you have other ministries that are also doing other things. Mm. For instance, you have the marine gas or, or oil tanks in the port of Takradi. You have some coming up uh, at Tema. You have uh, LNG, you have suction piles and all of that that are doing drilling and all that. But they are happening in the port. Yeah. So if you... Is it not about time you have a policy that embraces all these other agencies, all these other uh, areas um, as well? The to rules focus of in the a particular port way. stated clearly. The rules of the port. <laughs> because even if we want to come to policy to guide these different agencies and the different ministries, the backstop is GPHA. Because you run the port, you own the port. So it is you to determine as to how they want to run the place, to conform with your standards mm -hmm. and your rules. You got what I mean? So clearly, if the Ministry of Transport is coming with a policy to say that, look, any, any, any company, like, for example, I know Goel is going to spend almost about $13.5 million to put us up infrastructure to enhance bunkering yeah, yeah. in the port. Yeah. Perfect. And our policy is to make sure that, look, make sure we have more facilities, more tanks to get more of this uh, uh, fuel yeah. that can supply bunkering mm -hmm. to our ships. It's with GPHA. The policy can come. So you have to make sure that, look, Goyle and other, other, other oil marketing companies like Shaw, whatever you're going to do, should conform with the policy of Ministry of Transport. So clearly, I don't see, I don't see why should, this should be a problem. Okay. Let me, let me go on to the phone lines and then we'll continue from, uh, from there. Uh, who do I have on? Okay. So I am told that something uh, is gone. I, I'm not sure which something it is, but <laughs> <You're friend. laughs> I, this was just I on port. I want to ask the dean of RMU when is RMU bringing training of operating? So I'll try and read most of these, and then we'll respond later. Uh, I want to ask uh, the dean of RMU when is RMU bringing training of uh, operating machinery around the in existence? Because there is no school which train on RTG and STC, STS, yeah. and also the rich starkers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one says, um, 
I salute Honorable Eric Spint. Uh, I salute Honorables Eric, Spint, Eric from Spinters Road, but why can't we put proposals that government, as this Dr. Nkrumah did, build for 25 years and belongs to Ghanaians? Uh, good show for all government projects. About 250 companies of uh, Dr. Nkrumah closed down. Where all for 25 years is for the state? Okay, not too clear. It's not always about money because the project gives value for itself. Uh, sorry, you said, who do we have? Hello, good evening. Samson, is it? Hello. Hello. Okay, finding. Hello. Good evening, my brother. Yes, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Yes, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Is that Samson? Hello, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you have it? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Hello. Okay, so can we fix that quickly while I go through the... Hello? Uh, uh, Meshak from... Hello? Oh, but I cannot hear you. Okay, so the tech is... Uh, Johnny, let's, let's get it uh, sorted out. Meshak from a shaman, Dr. York taught me at RMU, the panelists are right. Ghana as a country does not have much interest in the blue economy. If we had the lagoons, rivers, and lakes wouldn't be polluted by Galamse operators. One aspect we can look at is the sea taxi business. It will generate a lot of money to the country. Is there something like that, Doc? Maybe we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The port brings a lot of revenue to the country, so Ghana must have a policy to control the blue economy. Most of the observers on these fishing vessels have complained and made official complaints to the fisheries ministry about the sanitation on board, yet still nothing is being done. Uh, this one says... Sami, the Honorable Minister in his submission indicated how government gave MPS uh, some $830 million as tax waiver. I want to find out from him whether uh, he supports that idea, considering mm -hmm. the fact that MPS couldn't raise the $1.5 billion for the project and had to fall on GPHA for guarantee, as we heard in the press. I also want to find out from him uh, what has happened to his committee's report on the concession agreement? Mm -hmm. Mind you, the committee used the taxpayers' money in the accidents. Mohammed from Labadi. Okay. Bobby from Sakumono says, Good evening to your honorable panelist. With the issue about Tema Dry Dog, I would like to find out what prompted the MOT, that's the Ministry of Transport, to boycott the initial process of getting a strategic investor. Secondly, what prompted Ministry of Transport to bring Aka Energy from uh, nowhere to distort the entire process of getting a strategic investor for Tema Shipyard? We are pleading with the government to go back to the initial process where three investors were so or shortlisted and rigorous assessment conducted by uh, transactional advisors to settle, uh, num is it? settle on one who is suitable to take over the yard. So the WhatsApp line that I'm reading, again, 055 You cannot call that. So the calls are coming and I'm not able to pick you. You can only call on 020-552-8353. Uh, this one, okay, so kindly ask the Deputy Minister, how far have they involved the workers of Tema Shipyard for Aka Energy deal? Uh, Mr. Hassan, I B M, a worker, have they uh, bended the evaluation report of the transaction devices or not? Oh, sorry, transaction advices. I'm sure he wants to say. Uh, okay. So we can take responses on those ones quickly before. Uh, I think I have the majority. You have yeah. you have most of it. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, somebody said. Uh, the the you, there's a question as to what is government the 834 million yeah, yeah. Tax what is government doing i i responded to a question that sami asked about government um, support in terms of the economy as to how we could uh, uh, promote the the, the private, the, the private sector. sector in the blue economy and all that and i gave an example of that arrangement because mm -hmm. it was part of the uh, uh, 
support that government and GPHA uh, give to MPS, that is $834 million for the $1.5 billion. Let me budget. rudely interject and pick Pascal from Tema. He's been on the line for a long time. Hello, Pascal. Hello. Hello, Pascal. Your network okay, is back. <clears throat> so that is that is that. He also Hello. asked me about. Yes, Pascal, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Analyst and VOI. Hello. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Go ahead. Hello. Okay. Looks like you can't hear. Uh, you yeah, have good to evening to your panelist. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you for the program. It's a very nice program. But okay, honorable, you can go ahead. Uh, so, so that is that is just by the way. He also asked me about my report, <laughs> which I led to do on this MPS yes. matter. And the report is out. We government has met, and um, uh, the 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 shareholders of the MPS deal, and the outcome of it was that there was there was. Um, uh, release that was signed by my minister under the directive of His Excellency the President. And part of the release was that GPHA and MPS should meet and look at the areas where there are few gray areas that they can look at it. As of now, I've not had any brief as to what, whether they have met and there has been any resolution to some of these things. So I need to find out where they are now for, for that matter going I know forward. They, they've been meeting. They've been meeting. Yeah. I, have, I, I have no clue as to what has been done. Then somebody also wanted to ask me why the boycott of the uh, shipyard dry docks are referred to Aka Energy. Okay, so let me pick Kofi and then yes. you respond to that one. Hello, Kofi. Hello. Yes, hello, Kofi. Okay, so this is what you can do to help us. Please listen to the call through the phone handle, uh, not the one that is on the television, because the television delays before you get that. So if you're waiting to hear my voice before, you definitely have a delay. Listen to the, the voice from the phone handset. Hello, Kofi? Okay, Honorable, please go ahead. So there was a question whether the, the ministry energy. has involved the workers of... Uh, 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 the dry, dry docks. Dock. Yes, my minister visited them quite recently to meet them, and he briefed them what the government is trying to do in the revamping of the dry docks, and asked to whether why there was a boycott on the existing arrangement that they had, and they given it to Aka. Um, I'm told that as part of the procurement process, one of the clauses, government have the right to truncate, mm -hmm. as and when they feel. Uh, it's not going the way they want, want to do. It. So I'm sure it's on that same spirit that they're looking at the ACA arrangement. And as a nice, it's, it's not conclusive. It's not conclusive with the ACA energy arrangement. So we are still exploring and seeing what we can all do. But we want the best for the dry dogs, we want the best for the country. And of okay. course, my constituency. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let me quickly address the uh, sea taxi issue. You know? yeah. Okay. yeah. In many, many places, um, commuting from one end to the other. I mean, we have it sometimes on the Volta Lake. Yeah. You know, it's a similar concept that he wants also at sea. But I can say that, look, when I talk about the cruise industry and I talk about recreation and boating, Ghana is blessed such that along the coast, we have a number of forts and castles. Yeah. It is possible for us to leave maybe Tema and then maybe stop over in Winneba, you know, the people will get down, they go do some things, find, look around the castle, etc. If we develop these places, they can go to a pump, there is some there. They can continue Mori, to Abandi, uh, uh, Mori, to Abandi, you know, etc. Salt Pond. They can continue all the way to Hafa Sine. Yeah. And we would be able to generate employment and generate some business out of this. So that is important. That is why I talked earlier about our yeah. lagoons and yeah, you know, okay. how we have messed up okay. the lagoons, etc. Yeah. So it's important for us to realize that the potential is there, still within the blue economy, yeah, yeah, to uh, develop these areas and to utilize yeah, them. Um, Doc, you are present, right? In fact, we, we have done our feasibility studies on this. But there was a research that was done and was uh, actually uh, made by one of our, um, you know, 
a principal lecturer, say, you know, I, I know you know Mr. Manti. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So we, we have all the information. Fine. Okay. Um, the, 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 you know, also, the, the problem is funding. I mean, are we as institution going to manage this? Or are we as institution going to sell that idea yeah. the, to who? Private in the pr private sector. So mm -hmm. that one is there. You know, we have all the document to, you know, to start from, even today. Okay. But as I'm saying, you see, um, if the, um, when it comes to PPP, we can't sign an agreement with any company to do ABCD. It must come from either from the ministry or from yeah. whatever, yeah. you know. So that, that, what, that one is, you know, is, is the pipeline. Okay. Definitely, you know, as, as, as a coastal state, yeah. you know, I mean, a, a sea, sea taxi yeah. should be one of the yeah. uh, tra transport I mean, uh, options. I mean, from, uh, from you know. Tema to Takradi. Takradi. I mean, on a weekend, yeah, we should have a boat. Yeah. Is exactly. You know, that yeah. goes to Takradi. Katamaran. With, with, yeah, with, with, a, the, with good know. music, yeah. you know, fanfare, and people can have their wedding reception. Let me, let me, pick, <laughs> let me pick David. <laughs> no. David from have a good time. Hello, David. Have a good time. <laughs> Hello, David. <laughs> Hello, David. Okay. Mm. Jones, kindly mm -hmm. sort the lines out and uh, yeah. so that you don't waste their time. Uh, uh, this one says, hi, good evening. I am Araba mm -hmm. and I am loving this discussion. I'm a student of Regional Maritime University. Can you please ask your panelists the best advice uh, for we, for us, the maritime students? Because most of us think attending Regional, Uni regional Maritime University means straight working in the maritime industry. <laughs> yeah, as I said, you see, that's the thinking. Even though during orientations, we let them understand. And as I also said, now we have entrepreneurship in, as mm -hmm. a course, yeah. which we teach you know, all, you know, all students, whether uh, you are an engineer or whether you are a port operator. You know. But the thing is that you have to position yourself to do that. Let me give you a typical, very interesting example. We had a student who uh, finished port and shipping, BSc. He went, she went around, a lady, she went around, and she wasn't getting work. Then somebody advised her that, why not start something which you are familiar with? And what are you familiar with? That is preparing the kinky. And that's what she has been doing for the past two years. And because she finished our university, and because the staff know her, and because the students know her, when she brings the 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 the, the cake <laughs> well within, packaged packaged well packaged within minutes it finished, it's finished. It finished. Doc, that is why i said that as a graduate you are training exactly. to think aloud exactly. yeah. you know to think aloud yeah. and make sure that at least you be creative in mind exactly and see what is so that is exactly what you know lady, so now <laughs> but maybe the orientation yeah. from the school yeah. is a problem they don't get that that's what I'm you know saying. throughout the educational yeah. process you know, we're also teaching them other things yeah. and they, that's why i said they must understand it within the framework because of the blue economy okay. yeah so <laughs> this one know. says good evening sami and your distinguished panel uh on the on the issue of employing graduates from rnu even though the major employers are limited in terms of taking in these graduates we see them employing uh, political science students to handle highly technical rules in the industry. The truth, the truth is, uh, is one. If we go ahead to favor family and friends over expertise, then Ghana still won't be able to enjoy the benefits of the blue economy at maximum. Kojo from mile seven. Is he right? You're not. He makes a good point. He makes a good point. I mean, he makes a good point. He makes a good point. He makes a very good point. You know that you you are employing other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but because because the industry has other areas. Yeah. Doc, for instance, is a lawyer. Yeah. So assume that the the legal department of any of these agencies. Uh, uh, needs a lawyer. Yeah. They will take the lawyer. If they need an economist <laughs> or statistician for research and numbers, they will take that. Yeah, but you see, well, it depends upon the degree. <laughs> we the we, we, we yeah. also, I mean, we, yeah. the students also uh, study maritime law, at least, not to certain, you know, but at least, you know, within the context of the work they do, the they will be able to manage some of these things. Okay. It says, uh, this one reads, greetings to you and your panelists. Please ask the minister about the cabotage paper the former director general of GMA, Kwame Uwusu, presented to the Transportation Committee. Mm. Greetings to you. and your, Okay, so the same. Okay. Yes, um, we've, we've received it, and I think it's an attorney general that they are making some inputs. And when that is ready, 
um, it will go back to the cabinet, then they will refer to parliament for us to start engaging. Okay. Okay. And uh, please, I am Nana. I want to ask when RMU is going to start the offshore crane operator training course. Okay. Uh, I heard yeah. of it and yeah. I want to come okay. for the training. Yeah, uh, thank you. You know, um, you know, we, we had a, a government grant facility of uh, $3.4 million to, uh, we call it oil, oil and gas capacity building. And in that project, we have what you call crane simulator. All these equipment have been installed. But you see, um, we, you need to certify these equipment so that if I come to study or use or study under this crane simulator and I finish, I'll be given a certificate which will qualify me to, you know, that is a uh, creditable certificate that will qualify me to do A, B, C, D. Okay? Now, to handle that, to handle that equipment. That aside, we, we have a collaboration with SeaWorld. And see what has promised that he's going to bring it live, you know, cranes and, you know, uh, uh, risk stackers so that we can use that. You know, for the simulator is there. You can use it to do A, B, C, D. But when it comes to life. The, the life, then we need the practical things. So who, very soon we will start. Not, not, not that we are waiting for the equipment. We have this equipment were installed, you know, and then um, about two years ago was uh, inaugurated. By, by his excellency was not there, but he sent you know a minister to come and okay. do that. So very soon we are going to to to, to start you know uh, using those okay. equipped labs for. Dr. Ambia, you have the last shot. Blue economy, the future, the potential. How do we move? Yeah, fine. You know, I started with one word, and I will end with that same word, and that is uh, interest. Interest. <laughs> interest. You know, once once you know what your interest is as a country and especially as far as the blue economy is concerned, then you have to find out what kind of policy do I put in place. And in that policy, I think you have to address four main things. First, you need to have the legal framework, the administrative framework right. You need to look at the infrastructure that goes with it, and you must have that right as well. You need to look at the technology. Because I told you today, and you were talking about risk stackers and yeah. the rest, and that is the technology. So the technology that is there today, you need to imbibe that technology and work with it. And then lastly, the human capacity. So these are things that if you put in place within a certain policy framework, then you can address what your interests are. And consequently, it will make you competitive in the global marketplace. Dr. York. Yeah, thank you very much. As I've said, you know, for RMU, we have the capacity. And uh, as uh, Doc said, some years ago, when you went to the ship, you saw the wheel. Now, when you went to the ship, you, saw, you will see only buttons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it means that the industry has dramatically changed. So in that case, then we have to train the person who is going to manage or operate or man, you know, the equipment to be able to be conversant with this. So for RMU, as I said, with this um, uh, restructuring, which we have done, um, you know, we have uh, MODEC uh, has built a modern welding uh, facility, plant, a facility yeah. for us, you know, costing about $1.6 million. So when, when it's actually, we call it the state of the art mm. welding, you know, shop, where when you come, and we train you, and it has been certified by Canadian Welders Bureau. So it means that if you come through that and you get that certificate, there's nowhere, there's no shipyard in this world that you can't work, work there. So you see, we have position, we are, as I said, we have positioned ourselves to meet the challenges. But of course, <laughs> some of the challenges, as Honorable is here, you know, we need. <laughs> yeah, support. The the support. Okay. <laughs> Honorable, you take the last one. Yes, Everybody is looking for your support. Then we can what end What I can here. say is that <laughs> as a ministry and the government uh, um, supervising ministry of our agencies, we will continue to provide the leadership and the support to all agencies under our blue economy, i.e. Ghana Ports and Arbors Authority, Ghana Shippers Authority, 
Ghana Maritime Authority, including the Regional Maritime University. We are very keen and very serious about whatever we want to do at the place. On the area and issue of dry docks and shipyard, we agree, and I agree with my seniors here, there's a huge potential and there's every opportunity for us to take advantage of it. And whatever it takes for us to look for money to expand and to make good use of the facility, it is on course and we're ongoing and we'll make sure we deliver. Now what is important is, is that we are always ready, government is ever ready to look at partners that can support us. And currently in the blue economy, what is more important is one about the infrastructure. We've talked about the, uh, the MPS deal, mm -hmm. which is ongoing, even though the two beds are operational as of now. You go to Takwa Report, we have the EPS Tech project, a very modern Ghanaian-owned terminal that we are doing. The, the, the terminal that has been built for the, the manganese, the manganese yeah. you know, to increase the volume of export of manganese and bauxite is also good. We are also engaging, um, Goal is going to invest about $13.5 million to provide huge tanks for bunkering services in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the blue economy and all that. We are ready. Government is ever ready to support anybody. And one of the areas that we can do is about tax, tax reforms that can really cushion them so that they can entice them to come and support us in doing all this. And above all, about the human capital. In as much as we're looking at academia to develop our young ones who graduate and take over from us, in the institutions, they're also building capacities. And I know in GPHA, uh, currently you're looking at areas about risk. And risk is very key. Yeah. You look at how you assess the risk. You look at how you can identify the risks. You use how you can control the risks and to extend to even minimize these risks. These are all areas of how we can build to make sure we don't, we don't uh, uh, waste most of our resources. And I think that uh, the Ministry of Transport will continue to take advices and to see how best we can develop our country and particularly in the blue economy. Okay. Thank you. So uh, apparently it was uh, Samson Asaki who was on the, on the line. He sent a text message and said that I should say uh, hello to all, your, uh, all the panel uh, members for me. Uh, I am glued and watching all of them. These are mentors. Uh, say hi to Dr. and be my mentor. Okay, <laughs> so that's your friend, uh, Samson Asaki. Uh, <laughs> next, next up, International Port News. <laughs> chemical tanker ANS was attacked by pirates on September 16 while it anchored some five nautical miles off Conakry, Guinea. According to data provided by IMB Piracy Reporting Center, four pirates armed with a gun and knives boarded the tanker in the early morning hours. IMB Piracy Reporting Center added that the perpetrators reportedly took the duty AB hostage, tied his hands, and forced him to lead them to the bridge. Once inside the bridge, the robbers took the duty officer hostage and forced him to lead them to the captain, chief engineer, third officer, and boss's cabins. The report shows that after looting the cabins, the robbers locked the crew in a cabin and escaped. Crew personal belongings, cash, and ship's properties were stolen. The operator of the vessel's Latvia-based ship manager, LSC Limited, emphasized that there were no injuries to the crew members, adding that the entire crew is in good spirits and health. The company noted that there were no reports of damages to the cargo and the vessel following the incident. The U.S. Department of the Treasury has announced new sanctions against Russian entities and vessels over the alleged involvement in a sanctions evasion scheme to transport jet fuel to Russian forces operating in Syria. Specifically, the U.S. designated Maritime Assistance LLC, a front company supporting the OJSC Sovrat, which was originally sanctioned for operating in Ukraine. The U.S. Treasury noted that Shovrat was behind the sanctions evasion conspiracy to make payments and facilitate the transfer of supplies of jet fuel to Russian forces operating in Syria in support of the Assad government. Vessels identified as blocked property of TransPetroChart Company Limited include three general cargo ships and two tugs. TransPetroChart was designated in December 2016 for having provided material support to Sovrat.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, the Honorable Deputy Minister for Transport and Member of Parliament for Tema is Daniel Nikwate, Titles Glover. Also, Dr. Kofi Mbia, the Chief Executive Officer, Ghana Chamber of Shipping, uh, Principal Partner, Alliance Partners, and Maritime Law Consultant, the man who has the sea blood, seawater in his blood. And Dr. John York Abedu is a Dean School of Graduate Studies, Regional Maritime University. Thank you for watching this week. We'll bring you that particular story and we'll discuss in detail the role of the freight forwarders in the port.